Give me a thumbs up, Tony. I'll make this thing a real reality. We're good to go. That's what's up. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the many corners of the world. Welcome to every single person that's joining us on this stream. This is the Blueprint Series that is finally happening, the global webinar for artists in the film and TV industry, actors, actresses, writers, directors, producers, filmmakers, storytellers. This has been a dream, um, excuse me, um, and it's finally come together and we are so proud that we've got takeoff. You know, we live in crazy times. The digital era is sometimes intimidating, but thank you yeah. to the digital gods. Thank you to the digital gods that we got takeoff. Um, I would like to humbly appreciate the co-producers and co-founders of the Blueprint series, Mr. Samad Davis, the incredible Winsome Sinclair for this vision, for this baby, and for actually realizing it in literally no time. Um, and, um, you know, um, and I would like to absolutely give a big thank you and a big shout out to our media partners, BET Africa, for allowing us to, um, to make this a big experience for echoing our message and our voice throughout the many corners of our beautiful continent, Africa. Um, I would also humbly like to appreciate and thank you, the last partner of this event, the Artist Corner TV recently launched um, our YouTube channel and platform, which is 48 hours launched and the three powers, the Blueprint Series, BT Africa and the Artist Corner TV have made it their mission bring the powers of the world together to bring the great energies in the arts film and tv together so they can impart knowledge empower the artist educate the artist rehabilitate the artist inspire the artist especially in my very biased corner the african artist what are we talking about today what are we talking about today? It's very simple. We're talking about navigating Hollywood independently, globally, right? And I think the beautiful thing about this entire, you know, um, session that we're about to go into is that we agreed as a team that Hollywood is not just a geographical destination, a location, but Hollywood is rather a feeling. Um, Hollywood is rather a mood, it's a global mindset, it's a global approach to whatever it is that you're about as an actor, producer, director, what have you. Right. My name is Tapelo Mukwena. Those of you who do not know, I'm a South African actor, storyteller, producer, content creator, international actor, um, and I am blessed to be moderating this for you today. We've got an amazing um, panel um, we've got an amazing session that's going to take place now. We've got three sets of panelists. Um, we've got group one, group two, and group three. And each group has an amazing um, 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 group of storytellers, people who have outlasted and outstood the test of time, individuals who are ahead of us in the game, some of who are young and brand new to the game, but people who show and display enthusiasm, especially for storytelling, especially for black storytelling in a global sense. Um, we have, you know, our lucky BET competition winners who I'm gonna invite later on into um, the sessions um, to simply, you know, ask us a few questions here and there and speak to their favorite individuals. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, if you give me a thumbs up, we're going to get straight to it. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I like it. I like it. We've got takeoff. So, not wasting time. If you want to catch this entire experience live, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you're already tuned in to our BET Africa Facebook page and streaming live, or if you're already tuned in to The Artist Corner TV on YouTube or Facebook, then we say thumbs up to you too. And um, tell your friends, tell everybody to join in on the, on, on the conversation and see what we're talking about. Um, otherwise, we're going to get straight to it. In the first group, in the first set of panelists, we've got an amazing, amazing, amazing set to kick off this discussion. Um, we've got none other than South African actor, 
producer, entrepreneur who's been in the entertainment industry for over 15 years, a brother who is South African that I've had the privilege to see and, and be around on many different productions. His body of work um, is greatly appreciated across the continent of Africa. He continues to thrive. He is the CEO of Ferguson Films. His name is none other than Mr. Show, as they call him, Mr. Sean of Ferguson. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, man. Looking forward to this. Thank you for uh, the beautiful intro. I should have recorded that, eh? <laughs> it's been recorded anyway. Oh, it's recorded anyway. <laughs> I'm going to send you, I'll send you, I'll send you the clip after this. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Show. Next up in this first group of panelists, we have a woman who is incredible. You know, when I saw these names, I started doing my research and Googling everybody just to really bond with who they are. But this following woman is a veteran casting director with three decades in the business. She has helped many careers come to life and see fruition in Hollywood specifically. We're talking about the likes of Taraji P. Hansen, Terrence Howard, Halle Berry, Jennifer Lopez, Channing Tatum, Chris Tucker, Gabriel Union, can I have some water, please? And just yeah. have a drink. <laughs> you know, right here. Just the moment. You're doing amazing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> I've got a glass. I've got a glass now. Okay. <laughs> there you go. A moment, ladies and gentlemen, for the incredible Miss Kim Harden. How are you, my lady? I'm um, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Taps. I appreciate it. Really, really, really great to have you in the room. It's absolutely exciting. You know, um, you are still, as much as I'm moderating, ladies and gentlemen, you are still seeing an actor speak to you. So I am just blown away just oh. having a chat with this woman. Uh, Next, up, so Next up in the panelist, um, ladies and gentlemen, we've got um, a great mind. The reason that we're sitting here today, the reason I'm moderating this and even interacting with you today is because one day in my life, I met a brother by the name of Samad Davis, an individual who, when I met him, you know, I underestimated the meeting and I undervalued who he was at the time. I think I was coming from a set. I was dead tired and I wanted to go home and see my son. And this energy was just around me. And the next day he called me and we hung out and I got to understand what's on his mind. I was with him in Atlanta last year, August, spending some time with him, you know, just, you know, traveling the spaces, but overall an American based entrepreneur, philanthropist, international film and TV financier, content creator, format creator. He's the guy and the producer behind Top Actor. Um, he's a distributor. What doesn't he do? He's worked with Viacom, BET, Fox Africa, Netflix, DSTV, Mnet. An American brother that I really got to appreciate because of how he, he has a thorough understanding of Africa. His name, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Samad Davis. Welcome, Ooh. champ. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Mr. Samad. Yeah. Welcome to the room, Samad. Thank you. Um, next, um, and um, the last member of, in fact, the second to last panelist in this first group. Um, now, as a South African male actor, um, I grew up inspired a lot by, by, by what we saw coming from the Western community in terms of content. And the first time that I believed that the feeling that I had inside was valid and that I possibly stood a chance in this industry was when I started seeing black faces on television. And if there was a show that really changed how black people viewed black people on screen in South Africa, maybe Africa, in fact, for a fact, Africa, it has to be the un disputed, undeniable cop drama series, NY of New York Undercover, which starred the incredible Malik Yoba. And if he doesn't know this, I'm sure somebody, um, you know, is going to whisper it into his ear, but his roles on TV changed a lot of how we approached leading roles as black males, you know, 
when he took on that role of JC on New York Undercover, he made me feel like I could run a corporation, a precinct, a production and whatnot. You know, ladies and gents, I'm not going to say anymore. His list of credits is forever. He's an actor, producer, musician, educator, entrepreneur, amongst many, many other things. Please welcome to this very room, Mr. Malik Yoba. I'd just like to ask you to unmute yourself, Malik. You can just unmute yourself there, sir. I'm muted. There we go. There we go. Right. Hey. hey, Malik. <laughs> How are you doing? Good afternoon. I don't... I like those boys. What, what day is it today? I know. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I thought it was still Cinco de Mayo. My bad. It's tomorrow. <laughs> the next day. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what day it is. It's World Day today. Yeah. That's what it is. World Day today. We, we con we're connecting everybody. the different. That's right. Lastly, we've got, lastly, in our last member of this panel um and i'm gonna i'm gonna pronounce this correctly because samar said Femi, so i'm gonna try and get it right and not mess it up next we've got uk um uk based actor a brother who has starred in a couple of projects a few that i've happened to bump into along the way award-winning london-based actor filmmaker who starred in a hit film kid Hood. Um, in fact, I've just finished working on Bulletproof 3 with Noel Clark, who I think created Kid Old Hood. So that was quite interesting. He starred in Anuva Hood. He starred in Taking Stock, Kelly Brook, so many great productions. He went to the School of Economics in London. Um, an overall businessman who worked on commercials and all sorts of different productions with Sky TV. Um, I'd like to welcome, I'm not going to say any more. It's like two pages of stuff that this man does. But ladies and gentlemen, please welcome into the room, Mr. Femi Oyeniran. Hello, welcome, hello, sir. hello. Hello from hey. London. Hi, Femi. London. What's up, New London, world? How are you? London, very good, very the, place, good. the place with the highest death rate from COVID in the Western <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Here we are. But I'm alive though, we thank God. Yes. Yo, we thank God and we send our prayers, obviously, to every single corner of the world. We are going through the toughest time, but here's the bright side at the end of the tunnel. We still have selfless individuals that can take time out of their very unstable lives right now and package content that can change our lives as artists in the digital era. So once again, you know, um, prayers to all the countries, but hopefully this does give us better sleep at the end of tonight and possibly change our lives. Let's get straight to it. Let's get straight to it. I've got a couple of questions from the BET competition winners. So maybe I'm going to kick off with those questions and get the first session started. First question. Maybe I'm, I'm going to start off and ask the first question before we kick off. First question that I have is for my brother who has inspired a lot of what I do with my leading roles as a South African international actor. Um, the confidence that I have walking onto sets is not you know, the same as what walking onto set must have been for um, an average African actor 10 years ago. So Mr. Malik Yoba, sir, how have you in this many years you've been in this industry continued to keep a career continue to stay relevant and continued to almost be the only one of your kind in this business. And I'm going to ask you again, sir, just to unmute yourself for that response. Oh, okay. okay. Um, do we have you there, Malik? Something happened to the screen. Yeah. Does that happen to anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. okay. Um, right. So, over to you, sir. My um, question. I just think it's the grace of God, bro. I mean, I think we all know if you're in a creative field and you don't have ownership of your IP, then you're always um, 
at the mercy of someone else deciding when you can participate in their vision. Uh, and so uh, thank you, Samad, for the last offer for a project. <laughs> <laughs> Which we thought we were about to start, right? No, we, we're, going up. we're about to start in a couple of weeks, so thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you. In the nail salons in Georgia, got you. I'll meet you there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, honestly, you know, I think it's one of those things that you don't really realize you have a career until you look back. Yeah. Because in each moment, you know, like I said, if, if you're not working on creating your own content, um, yeah or opportunities, whatever they might be, then you're always waiting for an opportunity. And so I think it's a combination of just favor and grace, obviously hard work, um, good relationships, people that believe in you. Uh, it's always a wonderful thing when you get a phone call and someone says, hey, I'm offering you something. But, you know, even at this age, 52 years old, you know, I'm still asked to come in and audition for things. And sometimes, you're asked to come and audition for things that um, the next day someone else might offer you just direct the exact same thing. And so uh, the thing that has always driven me is a spirit of service and serving something bigger than myself. And it's not always directly connected to acting or the entertainment business, but just moving in the world with the spirit of how can I improve the life of other people. And I find that in my journey, that has been just part of the flow. Um, and then the other thing is something my father always said, which is build your own generator. So when they turn off the power, you still have lights. That's what drives my entrepreneurial spirit. And so I'm always looking for opportunities, whether it's in production, whether it's in writing or directing or consulting or real estate development or anything else. So that's, uh, that's been my approach. And then specifically, you know, show up on time and, and know your lines and do what you're supposed to do and be respectful, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. As, as one should. Yeah. Got you. Thank you very much, Malik. Thank you very much, sir. That's, that's very enlightening. I'm going to take a question from one of the BET um, competition winners. And this one is directed to Miss Kim Harden. I'm gonna find the question, there it is. And it is from, all the way from Kenya. Welcome to the house, Kenya, welcome to the room. Welcome to the room. Who do we have, Mr. Alex thank Kayo? Thank you, thank you, <laughs> Alex Kayo. Kayo. Thank you from, um, it's, it's around 8 p.m. in Kenya, so it's quite dark. But I'm enjoying. Thank you for joining us. Thank it's you for joining so us. Um, um, it means a lot that you could take this time, you know, to add value to your own journey. So over to you, Miss um, Kim Harden. It. Is all ears. Um, Kim Harden, hi. Hi. Um, when are we working together? <laughs> are you with us, Alex? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, anyway, my question to you is, um, I've been able to follow your, your interviews, stuff that you do, your workshops. I've, I've been able to keenly follow everything that you do. And in one of your interviews with uh, Courtney Taylor, mm -hmm. you are very categorical. You said you, are, you can work with anyone from all over the world, yeah. which, of course, struck my interest because <laughs> I'm part of that clause all over the world. So um, I wanted to know what's, what's, what's the process? Like, let's say um, I'm interested in working with you guys and you guys are in America and I, I live in Kenya. Okay. Um, how, how, how can we make that possible? Um, let's say to audition and just, you know, make my position myself to be able to to work with you guys to work more because you're on another continent actually yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um well first and foremost i think for a lot of actors that do work out of the country it is a little bit more challenging than being here in the united states and being up for projects yeah. and whatnot uh, so first and True. foremost you have to be able to find out what projects are actually being done here 
and actually what yeah. the subject matter is, first and foremost. I think for, for mm -hmm. foreigners, it's a little bit more, um, you have to be a little bit more diligent on finding the yeah. project and then finding the ones that you are right for. Just because all, a lot of projects are done here doesn't necessarily mean someone from another country is right, unless you have the characteristics sure. that we're looking for and, sure. can, um, and can absorb the accent and dialect that we're looking for for that, that character. Sure. That's kind of the more competitive thing, I think, for a lot of actors that are outside the country, is perfecting uh, the American dialect to be able to be considered for American roles. Uh, okay, okay. Because um, um, just to finish up with my question, um, we see, we follow Hollywood stuff, yeah? And um, of course, it's a bit hard for African-Americans to even secure roles in the US. Mm. So I just wanted to also add, what are my chances as an African or a Kenyan to actually get these roles? Not just any role that I'm required to like pass and, and just brush the screen or something, but maybe something tangible like a role like a big role, something that will put me out there. What are my chances as an African? Well, it, it, again, it's depending on how many, how many projects are done within that type of genre, if that makes any okay. sense to you. you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You don't usually just hire yes. actors just because you're a good actor. It has to fall within the yeah, context to fit. what the subject matter is of the project. Does yeah. it make any sense? You do make sense. Okay. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to kind of find out what the projects are, whether or not you're right for them and where casting is taking place. A lot of times projects, especially for the African content, are done um, and cast out of London as well. So, you know, you sure. just have to really kind of be a little bit more diligent and find out where the projects are going and then try to see if you can get an opportunity to be considered. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much, Alex. I hope that really hit a spot, yeah? Sure. Big up. The next question um, is for you, uh, Mr. Davis. This one, oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that one back. That one is from, it's from, we'll take this one. This one is from Aisha Shaba, all the way from Nigeria. Is Aisha with us? Is she here? She's, she is. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. This, this one is a question that came from Aisha, and I believe she's here. this one is from Tamar Davis. Uh, okay. Yes. So Hi, everyone. Hi, I hope Aisha. everyone's okay. Good, good. All right, so this question was for Samad because um, Do we have I Aisha? Knew is she here? She's yeah, here. I'm here. Can you hear me? She's, she's here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. We got you. Aisha. Okay, cool. We can hear you now. Hi. We can hear you now. Okay. okay. Hi, so um, go ahead, Aisha. You can ask your question straight to Samad. All right. So hi, everyone. So basically, um, this question, I wrote this question specifically for Mr. Samad because um, I knew when he came to Africa, he had a very big dream in order to merge Africa and Hollywood together. And I knew he struggled because, you know, coming from two different cultures, two different expectations, two different um, battles and, you know, different things. He had to confront so many things as a returnee. I'll call him a returnee because he's black African as well. So for Samar Davis, how did you, how, what, what was the biggest challenge taking on Africa? What was your biggest challenge taking on Africa? Can you hear me? Saman has his mute on. I'm sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. Hello, Aisha, thank you for the question. Samar, did you get that question? I got the question, I got the question. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that sometimes in life you have to step back to move forward. Okay. And I look at my journey in Hollywood, uh, in, in America period, being in this business as an independent content creator. Um, I stepped back, I left the industry and started doing other things in Africa. And then at some point I said, well, let me introduce my core uh, background into the continent and be value added, right? So mm -hmm. for years people would think, hey, I'm crazy. What are you doing in Africa? What, what's, what's the point? What, what are you doing? You know, and in America they told us as uh, people of color, our films and television, uh, our content in general, didn't do well overseas. 
And then the minute that you step foot overseas in Africa and different places, and you realize everyone goes to work the same way we do. Everyone is doing the same things, right? Everyone has family and work and careers and dreams and visions. And I realized that there's no difference. There's no difference. Why am I not doing producing content in Ghana or Nigeria or South Africa or Uganda? Why am I not working with, with the same people? You know, we've just been cut off, right? So um, it used to be laughed at, not laughed at in my face, but people thought I was crazy for running back and forth to Africa. And to this day, if I go through society in America, people see me, they say, what are you doing here? Aren't you back home in Africa? People think I live in Africa now <laughs> and I don't live here. I'm just visiting America. Um, so it was challenging at first, but I think you have to always stick to your vision. You know, um, people might count you out or may not believe in you, but if you have a vision and you're willing to put the work in, then that's all that matters. And I, and I, and I look at this beautiful collage of people um, from around the world, right? And all over Africa and America. And this is what it's all about. This was the end game for me. The end game for me is to be able to work fluidly. And the purpose of this whole project right now today, this Blueprint series is to be able to say, hey, uh, Winston Sinclair or Kim Harden's cast in this next project, hey, consider Shona Ferguson. Hey, consider Nina over here. Consider Tapello. consider Connie, consider Michelle, consider Aisha Shaba, right? it should be no difference. Consider Malik Yoba, right? So we should be able to do stuff. Michael Lucker creates, he's a, you know, speak shortly, but a hell of a screenwriter. We should be able to put stuff together and work anywhere. It should not be us stuck in America with the, the black African-American experience or in South Africa with the South African experience or in Nigeria with just the Nigerian experience. Why can't we tell our stories? I know mostly everybody on here, right? And I have different relationships with everybody. But I, you know, and it is no different. It's just we're different people, different relationships, but we still get things done together. That's the vision. And that's why I look at this as an opportunity to unite the industry. Uh, uh, Femi, we should be able to produce the next dope project in Nigeria and shoot part of it in South Africa and part of it in America and something in Ghana or Nigeria. Why not? So that's my overall vision. Um, it was very difficult, but I believe in me. If no one else does, I believe in me, right? So I just executed the vision and I continue to, but nothing works without great relationships. And I value my relationships because there's so many people I'm looking at right now. It's all relationship driven. So yes, I can say, hey, we, we, we accomplished a lot over time but I can't do it without the great relationships that I have. Look at my brother, Atanda Wakani. Another great relationship. Black Panther. <laughs> so I hope I answered your question. It was, it's, you know, everything in life is difficult. Nothing is easy. I, I never had anything come easy. I don't expect easy. It's Absolutely. just about believing what, what I come to do and, and having the right relationships, the right partnerships, and executing. That's it. And, 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 and just, you know, Samad, thank you very much for that. And I think just to add some, some more fire to that, uh, you know, the beauty of what's happening now is the world has become so connected. There is no delay in information. There is no delay in how we communicate. The impact that happens on the Western community in immediately and directly affects how I exist in the African continent. And I think one of the major things that I found to be a golden um, attribute about yourself was that you understood very early on that Africa was, is that one ingredient that's sitting in the kitchen, that one spice that nobody is using when yeah. they're cooking. And now everybody's gone, hold on a second. We've used all of these spices, but why is nobody pulling that spice? And now the seasoning feels just about right for the African artist, especially because that's who I represent, even though I, I do work on a global scale. And, and, and I appreciate that you see it in Africa and you saw it a long time ago. And what we're trying to achieve with the Blueprint series today as well, for all you um, African artists watching, is we're trying to unlock minds we're trying to empower your trade so you can navigate 
the global society, Hollywood, comfortably and with confidence and with talent. Okay, I'm going to take one, maybe the last two questions. In fact, one from the BET winners, and I'm going to close it off with one last question, and then maybe one last, um, you know, just a few, a few words from our panelists. You know, there's so many questions. I think the one thing we must just make peace with is the fact that um, we're not going to get all the questions in, but we're going to do our absolute best to make sure that we ask every single one of them. The next question that I have is from Eric Funani. Brother Eric Funani, and your question is for Mr. Shauna Ferguson. How are you doing, Eric? Can someone's mute? Can someone, someone has their TV on, can they mute that background? <laughs> Yeah, can, can someone please <laughs> mute the background for us? Somebody is... What happens when you have a real-time video call? Real it's got a big yeah, Maybe you can mute your phone, mute your background? No? Oh, is that not Michelle? I'm All Michelle. right, cool. We got that. Okay, we got clarity on that. So, yeah. So, Eric, if you are in the house, we you can go ahead and ask your question, sir. Do we have Eric? Is, is Eric in? Is, is Eric in now? Seems like Eric is not here. Okay, I don't know, Eric, Eric. Maybe you go to the next one then, I'm sorry. Connie is in, well, well Connie's on the next one. Ah, uh, we back on. Did we all get disconnected there? No, we're here. Okay. We're here. My screen just went completely blank. So please bear with us. Um, we are going to have a few technical issues, and, uh, but we're going to try our best to keep it together. So, Mr. Shaw, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, there's a question here for you, Mr. Ferguson, and that Sorry. is, how do you select? How do you select? your good cost and how do you as a producer and a business um select the cost to help tell stories better as as a producer and most importantly what are the most important things to look out for when you are or, or the one of the important things to remember when you are raising money or raising finance for your projects yeah i think i'll take it back to you know the top of the question which is um um, you know, when you start, before you think of the actor, um, you give birth to the character first on paper. And the process is always like that. You always create these characters and you put the show together, this movie together. And once you do that, in most cases, I mean, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I'm also an actor, so I'm, I, I know quite a lot of um, actors um, in the industry. Um, but in most cases, the typical way is you create the characters. Once you created the character, then you start the casting process, which, which is a very, very uh, long process. But, yeah. you know, you have to go through it uh, to get the right act. Because sometimes I could be thinking, oh, okay, I could play this role um, and, and, and I audition for it. And then next thing the director feels like, no, no, no I'm not going to fit in and if I somebody else. So it's always, we always have to go through the casting process. And that's um, us reaching out to agencies or if we work with the actors before, we call them directly, we put them on tape, and then we find the suitable um, actor for the role. Um, and then sometimes, um, and it's happened with a, quite a few of our projects, is you create a character and you already have the actor in mind. You already create this character and you know, okay, I want, this looks like so-and-so will fit in so nicely for this particular role. Again, it takes some time for any actor to get to that point. Uh, not, every, not everyone is, 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 is in, a, is in a, a space where, you know, uh, people just think of them and they cast them for stuff. Um, I mean, I've been in the industry for a while, but to this day, I might be a producer, but I, I still go for auditions. And people don't understand that they go, but why do you audition if you own your own production? I said, no, it doesn't matter. I still want to do other things. So we, we still have to audition. Nobody's too old to audition. So I'll say audition, audition, audition. Um, yeah. And then you find, the, you find the magic, you find the actor, and, and it works. Um, and then to go to 
How do you raise funds? Um, our industry in South Africa is very different from uh, um, some industries across the continent and overseas and stuff like that. And Samara and I have had long conversations about it. South African um, television industry um, is what's driving the industry mostly, uh, but more than film. Um, yes, we have film, yes, we have television, and then we have theater, but TV is like the mainstream. TV, South African audiences are typical uh, family viewing kind of audiences. So television drives is, is the bigger uh, platform. Now, the difficulty is that um, South Africa is, no, not the difficulty, let me go back to this. South Africa is also a broadcaster industry. So what that means um, is that most work, in fact, uh, more than 99% of the content that's on television is commission content. There's a difference between um, commission content and license content. So if your show is commissioned, it means you have to pitch it to the broadcaster. And if they like it, then they commission the show, they give you money for the show, and then it ends up on A, which goes back to what uh, Malik was saying in the beginning. Um, it's the IP thing. When your show is commissioned, then you don't own the show, then uh, the broadcaster. I guess I'm going to say network, Samad, eh? The yeah. network. Owns the <laughs> yeah, the network owns the content. Um, so that's a that's another challenging aspect uh, because you know you are still you are dependent on the broadcast to get the show on air, and then you can self fund a show. You can um, raise funds and get sponsors on board to create content, and that way that's how you get to own your content, and then you license it to broadcasters, which is a very right. difficult. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Shaw. Um, Kim, I've got, I've just been thinking about this a lot, especially during this time with the pandemic and looking at where the world is going with the digital era and how things have become so instant. What does that say for the role of a casting director? Do we have, you know, are, are we still going to go over to a casting director's rooms to get our roles? Or are we moving into a space where the productions are directly going to reach us through self-tape, through video, um, from our homes to build their relationships? What happens to the casting director as we move forward with the future of television and film? And I'm going to ask you to unmute, please, Kim. Sorry, that would help. Asleep. You could hear me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that this is definitely going to, uh, we're going to feel a change overall, I think, in, in our industry because of this world crisis going on right now. I know a lot of casting directors already did uh, cast from self-tape, but yeah. I like a little bit more hands-on. So I spent a lot of time with actors and worked with them through scenes. And I'm going to have to do that a lot differently now, I'm sure, for a minute. So we can't really start our job as a casting director until we can kind of figure out with various productions how they're going to be able to move forward so that we know now how to construct your deal and how to now buy you and what that all the ramifications that, that comes with that. That come with um, that. So I will probably begin my next couple projects yeah. with self-tapes. And then hopefully, you know, in a short amount of time, this will have, this will be lifted. And then I can maybe do a little bit more one-on-ones with people to get them a little bit more fine-tuned for whatever the role is. But it is going to make a, a drastic change, I think, in how we conduct our job from here on. Does that help? Did that answer your question? Everybody's on mute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was um, great. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, I we just having. Is anyone talking? Everyone, yeah, I feel I, I see you. everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Um, I just think that internet is probably I, slow in some. Right. Did, did I answer your question? 
Yeah, you did. It was amazing. Good. Okay. Okay, great. Kim? Yeah. It says here your network band, uh, bandwidth is low. I don't know what that means. I'm a tech I don't, savvy. I don't, I don't know, know what that means. Either. So that's why I said the, um, the, the Wi-Fi in certain areas will be um, affected because there's so many okay. people on the platform. So we just have okay. to be patient with it. Okay. Thank you so much for your patience, everybody. Um, I think I think because of the different time zones and the different times, our Wi-Fi is really taking a strain. But we're going to do our best to keep it moving. Um, is everybody still there? Just show me a thumbs up if you're still there and we're still on the same page. We've still got everybody connected. Okay, good. We got a thumbs up. All right, great stuff. So. Um, thank you so much for that, Kim. Um, very enlightening um, information indeed. Um, we've also got um, Malcolm D. Lee in the house with us um, here in this very esteemed room. Um, and for you as well, Mal Malcolm. Um, and welcome once again, and thank you for joining us on this, um, in this room as we empower the artist. There's a question that came in, and that question is from Marcus Mabusela, who's one of our BET, um, you know, our BET winners. And um, Malcolm, if, if you can go ahead and ask your question, I mean, Marcus, if you can go ahead and ask your question to Mr. Malcolm D. Lee. Is, Marcus, is Marcus still there? Michael John, wait a Marcus, second. do we have his name? Yes, he, he was in the room. One second. Okay, let's have a, let me just search for him. Marcus Mabusela. He's one of our BET winners and he's got a question for Malcolm D. Lee. Um, we got him. Do we have him, Samad? Yeah. Should I move on? Yeah. Maybe I. Maybe I can speak to Malcolm, um, Malcolm so long. Malcolm, sir, welcome. And, you know, I, I spoke of you earlier on, just introducing some of the works that you've done. I mean, you have completely, you know, you've got a body of work that speaks volumes um, from directing, um, you know, all of the great projects, you know, Best Man, you know, projects that really change our lives. Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins, amongst many, many, many more. Now, Malcolm, um, for the only question I would like to ask you at this point is, can you give us a breakdown of your process as a writer, director, when you are developing your concepts and your scripts, um, especially your, co your comedy films? What process do you take when approaching those concepts? Is Malcolm on? I I'm on. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we've got Malcolm. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, What's the process? It, it, every process is different, you know. Um, you know, with, with Roscoe Jenkins, it was an, it, the 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 idea was to create a, a family reunion and and use um, you know uh, comedic actors um, or and some some some. I think Kings of Comedy had, had come out, and I, and and that inspired me to 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 you know write um, a family reunion movie. Um, and, you know, and, and, and the idea actually was about, um, you know, a comedian who uses family in his act, in his act to, um, uh, to kind of like, you know, spread his comedy and, you know, um, but he was, he was estranged from his fam from his own family. Um, but uh, once Martin uh, came aboard, he, he, he didn't like the idea, he thought it was too on the nose for him as a, as a comedian. So he wanted so we changed that. So, and you know, you're constantly changing things to, you know, to accommodate, um, you know, your 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 financier, uh, sometimes your actors, and you know, and 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 the the process is, you know, writing process is a very <laughs> lonely one, particularly in your, when you're writing features. Um, it's not, um, it's hard. I'm I'm actually you know rewriting something right now, and it's and it's incredibly difficult. Um, uh, particularly during this time, I'm, I'm, this is not really uh, my writing space. Um, you know, I have I have an office for that, but you know, it's it's 
it's incredibly difficult, but I guess I start with character. I start with, you know, the, the kind of like overall um, broad story I want to tell. And I'm not a fast writer. Um, it takes a while for ideas of mine to incubate. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I put ideas to paper um, and not, and literally to paper, not, not just on a computer, but literally like pen to paper, like lots so you of, pen? Lots, oh, wow. lots of chicken oh, wow. scratch. Yeah. And, and, and what it eats. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's, um, I'd love to be able to just, you know, write it right on the computer, but it's, it doesn't always work that way. You know, my, 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 my writing pen works much faster than my, my brain to writing, uh, on, pa on paper works way faster than typing it. And you can't just, you know, do it, you know, exterior, you know, grassy meadow day and blah, blah, blah. it's, it's a lot. You have to like, you know, write it out and do the pre-work and the, and the, and the pre-writing. So a lot of that, you know, um, it's just it's just a long process of trying to build a structure. Was what you, is what all screenplays are, are built upon, is a structure, and you want to make sure that you uh, you get that that structure solid, and then you can fill in the, the blanks with you know character and intention and uh, setting and and whatnot. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 then Michael, you know when it when it comes to um, you know, African Americans, you know, filmmakers in Hollywood, you know, it was wildly, wildly believed for a very long, long time that mm. an African American lead would not do well outside of US territory, um, let alone US territory. And, and that theory obviously has since been disproved. But what, in your opinion, do you think would make African content more palatable to the US market? You know, what is it that Africa can contribute to the way stories have been told in, in, in you know, top of the food chain in the Western community? You know, I, I, as I tell any filmmaker, um, whether you're trying to appeal to an international audience or, uh, you know, a, a smaller community, um, you have to tell, write a story from your own unique perspective. You know, there's lots of stories out there but there's, you know, the, the, the kinds of stories, there's not that, there's not a, 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 a ton, you know, a lot, a lot of stories are, are, you know, just reworkings of, you know, Shakespeare, you know, like, uh, like, like Romeo and Juliet or, or Hamlet or Macbeth um, or King Lear, you know what I mean? And, and, and then there, and there are accounts that are not, not just Shakespeare, but you, you work them in a way um, that, that, is your, your uh, uh, cultural specificity. I mean, when it came to, you know, the, the, the movies that, that I wanna, wanted to make, I wasn't seeing myself as an African-American, educated, uh, upwardly mobile, you know, uh, aspirational black man being represented on screen. It was, it was a false um, uh, representation, you know, that I, that, that I saw and I was like, that's not who I am, that's not who, that's not who the people that I went to school with. And I am sure, I am, more than sure, there are there are images of, you know, the entire African continent embodied in, a, in a, with fifty some odd countries, you know, that are like, oh, it's Africa, and they're misrepresented, you know, across, you know, the the, the world, right? And it's like, so a person from Kenya has a Kenyan experience, has their own Kenyan experience. A person from Nigeria has their own experience in Nigeria, what are their, you know, and, and, and depending on the economic strata and depending on the kind of story they want to tell, you know, if it's a genre story, if it's, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a, if it's a crime drama, or if it's a, you know, a love story, um, you know, that you tell that from your unique perspective, from your brain, um, and, you know, get it out there. I think that, you know, if you build it, they will come. People were not seeing themselves, same like I was, and, you know, when I wrote Best Man, and they they took to it. They said, "Okay, like I want to. I, I I that that looks like how I see myself." And I think it's vital that we all, you know, put yeah. product out there how we see ourselves, not how other people see us. Thank you so much for that, Malcolm. And I think that rings very true for the African, especially South African film and TV space. We are getting used to the idea of watching ourselves on screen, seeing ourselves as those iconic leaders leading characters and heroes. And by virtue of that, um, we are starting to relate and we, we are starting to find our own um, appearances more palatable on screen and even enjoyable and, and part of our appetite, which is brilliant. Um, 
Thank you so much, Malcolm. I appreciate that, sir. Femi, I'm going to try and close this off, um, the first segment, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now, you do a lot of things. You're an actor, you're a producer. You've just, you know, you made a documentary about fatherhood, which featured a lot of great names, some of them Spike Lee. You know, um, there's so much that you do. You sort of, you, you kind of remind me of myself in this industry. You know, I'm an actor, but my fingers are everywhere, but this is where I get to unleash most of what I create and some of my own ideas. What are you busy with now? And what is the journey for Femi? Um, where is all of this ultimately um, growing to? You've built a great business around your art and your offering. I think ultimately, I mean, I started out in the industry as an actor. I, I, as you said, I started in No Clark's film, Kid Altered. And I've been able, that was the foundation and I've been able to build from there in between all of that. I saw, I went to university, I studied law and those skills that I attained for my law degree have really helped me to go into production. And um, because I, I got to a point where I realized I wasn't getting as much work as I would have wanted to get. And so ultimately what, what I wanted to do was um, I wanted to start creating my own content because I felt like that would, that, that meant um, I didn't have to depend on someone else to, to I didn't have permission to create if I, if I made my own content. Yeah. And so ultimately like, you know, what, what that has led to is for me to build, you know, to build a business that creates content. So, you know, my, I've got a couple of films on Netflix at the moment globally um yeah. with the intent and the intent too um which are crime thrillers we are uh, my company is developing a film with idris Elba's production company green door um which and then um, we are also developing a film with a major studio we um we've got lots of different projects ongoing so like ultimately for me my day-to-day -day is running my business is creating content is looking for opportunities to be entrepreneurial but then I feel like, you know, when the opportunities for castings come up, then I go for them because, um, and, and I stay fresh on that front because I work with my coach every week, no matter what. So no matter where I am in the world, I make sure that I'm working with my acting coach weekly so that, you know, I'm always ready when that opportunity arises. However, if it doesn't, I wake up every day and I get out there and I hustle in terms of like, you know, um, creating content, writing content, like, you know, um, producing content, identifying new, new work. And that's, that's what I spend the core of my time doing. And, yeah. then, and then, you know, and then everything else sort of falls into place. But as soon as the lockdowns finish, I'm hoping to make my first film in Nigeria. And um, that's, that's yeah. going to be huge for me because that's where I was born. I'm Nigerian and, you know, I've lived in England for over 22 years, uh, well, wow. 23 years. And so, but I, I, I go back and forth to Nigeria a lot more so in recent years. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to make my first film in Nigeria. I've got a film that we're developing in France. Um, we've got a film that we're making in the States, hopefully next year. We've got a film that we're shooting in Thailand. I feel like as, as black filmmakers, we have to be pan-Africanist in our approach to filmmaking. We have to, in, and when I say pan-Africanist, I mean, we need to, they always... Everyone's got their story about, oh, yeah, they say our content doesn't work. Every black person yeah. has got that, their version of that story. You're in South Africa, you've got that story. Malcolm's yeah. got that story from the US. So why don't we connect with each other and cut out the people that say that our content doesn't resonate? And, and ultimately, that's, that's what I'm trying to do in, like, you know, really, like, you know, originating really localized content in lots of different territories and connecting with like-minded people and audiences globally. That's beautiful, bro. And um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the world is undeniably super connected right now. And the amount of content, you know, the untapped territories and stories in our own continent is, is unfathomable. Right. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank every single um, panelist that we've had on this first group and this first session. Um, in closing, I'm going to ask my brother Malik Yoba. I'm going to ask my brother, Mr. Shaw, my man, Mr. Shauna Ferguson, to just close on this segment. And from you, Mr. Shaw, if you could speak to a producer who has ideas, who wants to create and make these ideas come to life and become tangible, what would you, your piece of advice be 
in this time, you know, talking to a dreamer, what should they be doing with their ideas right now? The content that they write with a pen like Malcolm D. Lee on a, on, a, on, a, on a notepad, what should they do with those ideas? And Mr. Yoba, um, from you, sir, um, building a career is not the easiest thing. I'm sure Kim has met a lot of great individuals that have sort of fizzled and disappeared appeared into into the air but i'm sure at the same time you've met a lot of great talents that have stood the test of time um how does one create a brand out of themselves that is um almost irreplaceable that is that offers a particular signature of performance or artistry how does one create that um and do actors really design their path or is their path determined by the scripts that are put in front of their faces I'll start with you, um, Malik. Um, back to what I said earlier. I mean, you know, it's like the golden rule. Who, who has the goal makes the rules. So I can, in my journey, um, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what the, of doing the type of work that I think really honors my range. And so, you know, like I have a one man show that I wrote, uh, which, I've written in and around other projects that took me 15 years to finally mount, where I play 20 different characters in it. It's about 10 of my original songs as a producer of it. I did it at the Apollo a couple of times last year um, with visions of it becoming, you know, like a Netflix special or I, I want to stream it. I've been talking to Netflix and Quibi and some other places. Um, you know, there are films that I've, I've worked on to write you know, to get produced that have not seen the light of day. I, d I think, you know, if you, again, if you are just an actor, it's a very passive profession. You have to, you know, I used to teach a class called the working actor. And the thesis of the class is at the end of the day, you are the CEO of you incorporated. And so like yeah. most people on here, you have to be a multi hyphenate, whether it's your true passion, or you yep. can develop into a passion, but you have to think like a writer, as a producer, as a director, as a marketer, you have to know about the finance side, how to raise money, all of those things. And so, um, I, you know, I'm sure for the other actors, it might be different. Um, and I think that ultimately the work that I've done that the world has seen in the minds of some people that has created the brand of Malik Yoba. But, um, I think there's always a huge gap between what you know you're capable of and what other people see you as. Like, for instance, comedies. I haven't done a ton of comedies, but I'm funny as fuck. And a lot of times people say, well, you know, we need, you know, a comedian for this. And I'm like, but I feel like it's my responsibility. If you haven't seen my comedic chops, then it's my responsibility. And that's certainly something I try to incorporate even in a drama as much as I can to always find the humor in things to show a little bit of that. But I also think that a lot of times in our business, people just don't have vision. And if they don't see it, they don't believe it's possible, you know? And so that's always the challenge, but um, I'm glad we're able to do this because this is unprecedented. It's like not much you want to thank COVID for, but. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly, this is certainly wonderful, right? I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 But uh, so that's it. And I, I too have been, you know, I did one Nollywood film so far, and I've been talking to some other folks about working across the diaspora as well. So this is truly wonderful to see um, so many like minded individuals um, and people that I know. Hey, Kim, I see Mike. Hey. <laughs> A bunch of folks. Um, uh, so yeah, it's beautiful, man. That's that's, that's my take. If you if you don't mind, I remember when I first met you at the um, we worked on um, Atticus um, project in Brooklyn. The monologue. Yeah. That we yeah. Do. yeah, yeah. And then we met again at Bad Dad Rehab premiere. Yep. We talked about Africa. You said, "Hey, I'm interested in doing something over there." Yep. Yep. So that's um. You know, right just before this as well, you know, there's a couple of folks that I've been talking to in Nigeria, you know, mm -hmm. produced some content with them and, you know, came up with some stories that we're, you know, developing. So, you know, let's go. Love that. Love that very much, man. Thank you so much, uh, Malik. Appreciate that. Um, you're a great host, by the way. 
Yeah, you are. Yes, you doing much. a great job. Great job. Excellent job. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you very much, everybody. Mr. the show. You want to? Sorry, Samad, go ahead. You got? No, no. no, no. Go ahead. Um, Shona was next. I just had something to ask. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mr. Show. Um, yeah. You want to close this one off for, for us, my sir? Yeah. For me, it's a uh, it's passion. You know, um, I'm looking at the, at the panel that we have right now, and I have nothing but massive respect for everybody. But um, you know, the thing is, people don't get it. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, you're gonna fail. That's just how it is. You need to have passion, you need to have drive, you need to work at it on and on and on. I've seen a lot of producers um, pitch one show or one film um, to a, 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 you know, a broadcaster, a network, whatever, and it doesn't get picked up and they get frustrated and they quit. It's because the nature of the industry, because we see everything is so visual, everything is in the screen, either the big screen or the small screen, we, we sometimes feel like it's instant. We sometimes feel like the success is instant. You know, you see an yes. actor on screen and you want to be famous and you want to get into the industry for the wrong reasons. And, and, and for me, when you do that, you're not, gonna, you're, not gonna able, you're not gonna be able to sustain it. You need to be passionate about it and you need to keep on knocking on those doors. Um, there was one year where I went to 113 auditions in one year. I didn't get one role. Wow. In one year, 113. It's, it's, Where did it's, they I make have you? My time. Sorry? <laughs> Where did they make you? That's, that's resilience. Yeah. That's resilience, man. 113 auditions. And when I tell the story, people don't believe it. And I said, you know, I still had to knock on doors to this day. It doesn't mean that now I've got uh, many productions going on. I've made it. No. If I'm not passionate about it, if I don't, if I don't keep on knocking on those doors, then, you know, it's all going to, it's all gonna fizzle out. And, and you need to work at it. Femi said something, he sees an acting coach every week and I'm like, what? I'm so, I'm, you know, I'm blown away by that. I, I was blown away, it was like, he sees an acting coach every week and this is a busy man with other things, but he still finds time to, I mean, come on. I mean, it's like, these are the things that we have to work at. You know, um, we need to watch other people, what they're doing. You need to watch a lot of content, content read, a lot, uh, read a lot of books, um, watch what other um, continents are doing in terms of content. And to be honest with you, um, for me, it's a very humbling experience to be a part of this platform because, you know, every day is a learning experience for me. So keep at it, keep knocking on doors, keep pushing, keep writing, um, do a lot of self-tapes, um, practice, uh, ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Ask questions. Um, listen. Listen. <laughs> you know, and, um, and keep pushing. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. You know, and this is exactly why we have this digital takeover and this inferno going on right now because, um, you know, we got to watch and listen to our environment and look and watch those who are doing really well closely and take a little lesson from their book. Thank you very much, Mr. Shauna Ferguson, Ms. Kim Harden, Mr. Samad Davis, Mr. Malik Yoba, Mr. Femi Oyen Iran, and of course, um, the, the iconic Malcolm D. Lee. I do not know how to thank you. I've got like papers and papers of questions, but I cannot possibly ask you everything, you know. You, you, so you thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You mind if I say it again? Malcolm, before we let Malcolm go, just one. Do you mind? Oh, Malcolm? Yes. Malcolm? Malcolm? Oh, he's back. Okay, I thought uh, I thought he left. I thought Malcolm left. Hey, I know so Malcolm is still here. Yeah. No, well, I, I do have to, I do have to go, but but what what's 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 up? <laughs> well, I'm gonna Samad, Samad, I'm gonna, I'm 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 gonna let you I'm gonna let you ask Malcolm a question. I I'm gonna throw it right back at you because you know Malcolm. I mean, we all know Malcolm, but you know there's that one question that you know that you should ask him that can help us learn a thing or two about the well, man's journey. Thank you. Well, I had the pleasure of, of, um, of bringing, hosting Malcolm in South Africa. He came in and, and was a um, episode director for Top Actor, which was a great experience. So my question to you is, do you, have you thought of developing anything for Africa specifically? Anything that you have already that you might think to shoot in Africa or something specific that you can develop Specifically for Africa. Well, what's yeah, around that? You know, I, I, not not specifically. Um, 
you know, for Africa. Um, but I certainly entertain and have been developing um, things, screenplays and shows that would take place on the continent. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think we, it's, it, we have not really seen, to my knowledge, uh, at least on a, on, on a, on a, you know, kind of global and, you know, from an American um, uh, movies, a, the, uh, African Americans experience on the continent and actually, you know, experiencing, you know, what it is um, uh, to, to be there and the, the cultural clashes that, that, that could potentially be there. Um, and the, the synergy, and I think that that's a, be a, a great opportunity to, to do that. Um, see African Americans in Africa. So I, I, I am developing things um, in that vein, and want to do, and I want to do more interaction. And you're right; it was a great experience. Uh, my first and only time to the to the continent uh, was with you, Samad, and it was it was fantastic. And I like I I, I, I want to do it um, a lot more. I really enjoyed you know working with the people there, and um, I want to I want to uh, do more, for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody have a great uh, weekend, great Friday, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Take care. Take care. Thank, yes. you, Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you sir. All right, Thank and you. that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first segment um, with its own technical teething problems, and we're going to cruise right on to the second segment. Thank you very much to our panelists in the first session. If you want to stick around, please do. Um, and, and stay for the rest of the session. If you have to go, we do understand. Thank you for imparting knowledge. You are changing our lives and you best believe we're gonna share this entire experience um, throughout different social media pages or different platforms. So the end product will be used as an entire package. That's gonna be really beautiful. Next yeah. is group two. If everybody's ready to move on, let's just get a thumbs up real quickly. That's, that's our little, you know, <laughs> there we go. I see the queen, Miss Connie Ferguson is in the house. I am, I am, I am humbled. Um, well, you know, it's greatness. It's, it's really great to see the very same people that, 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 you know, were part of your journey when you were cracking off, still in your life one way or another. And of course, during these tough times, we don't get to sit physically. And this is, this is the new physical. So welcome everybody. Moving on. To the next segment, I would like to welcome, and you know, for sakes of time, I'm gonna get straight to it. Um, our second group is also, it's just like power ensembles, Samad. This is really, really, you know, really phenomenal. Um, this lady that I'm gonna introduce next in segment two, ladies and gentlemen, is a lady who has won a Tony Award for her role in Carolyn. Um, she was nominated, she's been nominated for a couple of Tony Awards, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, she also, um, where I remember her is from her role on the number one ladies detective, which was shot in South Africa and Botswana, I believe. And I remember because I read for that series, I read a script for that series for a character it didn't work out, the life of an actor. Um, but I know she starred along your Desmond Dubes. She worked with Miss Jill Scott. And she also did an incredible um, 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 portrayal of her character on Power, the series, um, amongst many, many, many roles. I mean, she's done absolutely everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome to the global webinar room, the one and only Anika Noni Rose. Is she in the house? I am here. How are you? Are you, in the house. <laughs> are you with us, Annika? I am. Can you hear me? I can yeah. hear you very oh there she is. There you are. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, thank you Welcome. so much. That was lovely. <laughs> Pleasures all ours. Welcome to the room, Anika. Really, really happy to have you here. Next, I would like to introduce um the next individual that's joining us in this room and in this panel is writer, director, producer for, with almost 20 years of experience in the film, TV and animation and digital media industry. 
this person is qualified, has got a broadcasting and film um, undergraduate degree from Boston University College. He has worked on so many projects. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through them. He's worked with all the studios, ABC, NBC, CBS, HBO. He has worked um, on different productions with Steven Spielberg um, as an assistant on films like Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, Always Back to the Future, Three and Two, Jurassic Park. Man, can we just give a moment and a big thumbs up for Mr. Michael Lucker from the USA. Welcome, hey, Michael. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thank you for, um, for being with us. I like the background already. So animation. <laughs> so, so, so animation. All right, next, I would like to introduce a brother who I've always known about. I have saw him when he recently came to film in South Africa with Samad and Mr. Shaw. I saw him on Samad's Instagram because there was so much energy on, on Samad's IG when this brother was in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome an actor, a, produce, a creative man, a, an energetic man who starred in great films, who's a Nigerian Oga, a brother who has made his trade more than just a Nigerian trade, an international superstar, the one and only Enina Nwigwe. How far? I did, my brother. I did. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's such an honor to be here. It's such an honor. I'm super excited. This is like silver lining for me. That's really beautiful, man. I'm really excited that you here. You know, a lot of the continent looks up to you and your energy and how you're making these moves. And I'm really, really glad that you're here with us. All right, moving on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to invite to the room a man that I have had the pleasure of working alongside on many a productions from British productions to South African productions. He has now since left um, the land of the living and has moved over to um, the blue and the stripes of the USA. And he's literally building a career for himself. He calls himself, or we all call him, and he also calls himself the Prince of Theater. He he has blown me away because he has really just made a great journey and a great strides for himself in America. He starred on Black Panther. We can't forget it because it's the entire opening scene. Um, and of course, he worked with his father, Mr. John Carney, on Black Panther um, as well. I would like to welcome, I call him my younger brother, but he's making big moves and I appreciate him so much. Mr. Atandwa Carney. Welcome, sir. What's up, my brother? Since you did that, I'm going to go. How you Welcome. doing, bro? Welcome. Welcome. How you doing, sir? You good? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, the weather is a little off today in New York, but, you know, we'll survive. We'll survive. Yeah, yeah, and I and, and I can hear you working on that American accent. It's sounding rather good, gotcha. bro. You know I am, bro. You know I am. <laughs> you know what's up? <laughs> you I'm really happy to have you. I'm really happy to have you in the room. Um, we've also got um, last but not least, um, a very influential behind the scenes energy, a South African lady that I know. Um, I know I've known for a very long time about her work. I've, I don't think we've ever really had a, a chat beyond just hello, but she is none other than television writer, director at Gambit Films, and they are producing some amazing content um, from South Africa at, for the past couple of years. Number 37 is one of the movies, Say Duerster, Afrikaans film, Blood and Water. Please welcome to the room, director, writer, and, 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 Film enthusiast and storyteller, Nosipo Dumisa. What's up, Nosipo? Thank you so much. I don't know what I'm doing in this uh, group of people here, to be honest. I, I have no idea how I got here, but thanks, Ahmad. Um, I, I really appreciate it. I'm just kind of fangirling this uh, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we are fanboying too, so that's okay. Welcome, Nosipo. <laughs> so we're going to get straight to it. Um, they 
so many powers and 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 forces in this in in this panel. I'm gonna hit straight. I'm gonna go straight to my sister Anika Rose, and I've got a question. When you started working on the number one ladies detectives that I couldn't be on, you know, um, <laughs> many years ago, um, and you were filming in South Africa. And I believe that, you know, I didn't know much about you until I saw you on that show. You were starting off in your career. It, it felt like it was the beginning of your journey. And I never stopped seeing you since that show. I started seeing you absolutely everywhere, um, all the way to power and so many powerful portrayals. According to you, when you were beginning in the industry and when you were starting out, what made you believe and know that you are the real deal that you are at the right place at the right time, that you are destined and you are supposed to be an actress. What made you believe that you had the chops and you were enough to execute? Well, firstly, thank you. Um, it did seem like the beginning, um, but I had been doing theater for many years before I, before I did Number One Ladies. Um, yeah. And I... You know, I think you know when you're called to something. Um, I started sort of late for many people. A lot of people start when they're little kids, they're in classes, they're in ballet, they're in whatever. I didn't act in anything. My first play I did in high school, at my high school. So that was sort of late in the game for many professional people. But um, when I did that play, which was a musical, I knew in that moment on that stage, I said, well, I had never felt anything like I felt while I was on stage performing. And I did loads of things. I ran track, I played soccer, I swam. I, um, I was in the band, marching concert and jazz. So I did loads of things, but that was the thing that spoke to my spirit the loudest. And I actually stopped doing everything else because I was like, well, this is it. This is what I was supposed to be doing. This is, it's like the tuning fork. When you get to the right pitch, it vibrates the way it's supposed to. And that's what was happening for me inside. So I, um, I was lucky. I had parents who never tried to get me to do anything else. They always supported me in my journey. And they never told me that I couldn't do it. So I think probably that was the best tool that I left home with was never having been told that I could not achieve something. So I never thought of it as, oh, I'm stepping into this business with 100 million people trying to do the same thing. I, I thought of it as I'm bringing myself to the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, I trained. I went to, I got my bachelor's in theater. I got my master's in drama. So I trained myself because I wanted to make sure that when I stepped into the arena, I had the tools that I needed aside from um, a proclivity, um, you know, or, or a, a light of my own. You, you have to have something behind that. You can't just walk in feeling cute and knowing how to speak and think that's going to take you somewhere. So I trained and, um, and then I stepped into the world and uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to cross over to Nigeria, um, to Nigeria to speak to Aisha Shaba, who's got a question for Mr. Enina Nwigwe. You know, let's put Nigeria together. What, um, what do you want to know, Aisha, from Enina? Is Aisha with us in the house? She was on earlier. She was? Okay. I'll mo if she's not on, I'll Maybe come back to her. Okay. All right. I'll come back to her. Maybe let me just move on. Um, a question that I have before I move on to you, Michelle, from Ghana, because you want to ask Anika a question. I'm going to speak to my brother, Atandwa, who I know, um, you know, I remember the day when you when you, when you packed your bags to go and, and, and move to America and, and, and start working on your journey, what is it that, that you did, uh, you know, before you got to the working part of your journey? 
There's a lot of things that an actor has to take care of. We're talking about a work visa in America. I was in America last year again in August to sort out all of my work permits. Um, you know, I've got a show opening on, on Cinemax in June. I understood that if my work is about to be seen on a global scale, especially in the USA, um, it might be wise for me to get my work stuff in order immediately, you know, so I can have the right permit. What did you do right to make sure that you can walk into an American set and do what you do? Well, look, um, uh, I, I, the day this all works out, I will tell you what I did right. But up until now, I'm still on this journey. <laughs> I still don't know what I'm doing, really. But um, when I left, you know, I had seemingly reached this glass ceiling and it's this is my own individual view and i kind of wanted more I, I craved a lot more and i i've always had the dream to come to new york because of the theater uh it's in the united states there's a lot more opportunity so i started doing or like availing myself of more international work you know so we did um young leonardo which is a bbc production uh we did wild at heart life is wild uh together taps um, we did Book of Negroes with uh, Cuba Gooden Jr., uh, Young Mandela, I shot Black Panther while I was still living in South Africa in Atlanta. Um, so I had to have that body of work that when I got here, people would know a little bit about me, but not, you know, because they hadn't seen me before. I had to start from scratch. It was like a, like a rebirth yeah. of an actor, right? And then I enrolled at NYU so I could learn about the American theater canon, the American work, the American writers, directors, producers, uh, to learn a little bit of this dialect that people are using, which Samai calls, he always teases me about this dialect, but I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. I love so right now, it's yeah. just like putting, you just, what I'm doing is just planting seeds and putting all the pieces of the puzzle in one area so that I can start working on the bigger picture. But you can't do that if you don't have uh, J1, F1 visa, work permit, um, residency, you don't, you know, that, that green card that provides you with all that. So it's a journey, but here we is. Here he is, here he is, here he is. <laughs> right, so, so, you know, and you are doing very, you know, well and you steady on that journey and that's a beautiful thing to see. Um, you, so you don't just leave Africa or wherever you're from and just land in USA and think you're going to work, ladies and gentlemen. It's important for us to understand that there are processes, um, systems that we need to follow to make sure that we have the right permits for us to work. I remember when I landed in the US, I did a, I did a set visit um, to the set of Madam Secretary hosted by Tia Leone and Eric Stoltz. And it was one of the most beautiful, one of the most memorable days of my life because I felt like I was at the, I'm in the right space. You know, I land in America and the very next day I'm on the Madam Secretary set. And the one thing I remember, there was a moment, and I, I mentioned this to Samad, when Tia said to me, she came off set after introducing me in the morning at about lunch, she comes off set and she says, hey man, why don't you come play with us? Why don't you come work on the show and do a small part on Madam Sec? Can you shoot next week? Do you have the right permit? I was left speechless because I knew at that second that it could change or make, you know, so I obviously gave her the whole speech about, oh no, that's why I'm here. I'm about to go to Atlanta, meet Samad, meet the attorneys and sort it out. So it could literally be a small opportunity like that that could go because you don't have the right paperwork and the right things. Okay, Michelle. Yeah. Yes, finally. Finally. Yes. She needs to ask the questions. <laughs> BET, of course, is one of our major partners, and we are grateful to have such a big voice speak to the corners of Africa. Thank you so much, BET, for bringing us the lovely Michelle Latour from Ghana to speak to my sister, Nani Rose. Go ahead, Michelle. Almost, I think this is an amazing, um, you know, like you said, Samad, montage of African representation, we be it African Americans or those from the diaspora. It's great to see people from all walks of life and from all corners of the continent. And Anika, I'm one of your biggest fans, and you know, I don't want to seem like a like star star but I am. <laughs> 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 I just did some research on you about, you know, how, you know, growing up, you kind of visualized, you know, what you wanted to become.
become, you know, the voice is what it is that she wants to always have, to have, you know, a platform to, to change, change the narrative and change, change the uh, description of, of, of self. And my question essentially is around that particular, you know, visualization of yourself. Do you feel that it's important to change the narrative of the African identity in Hollywood? And if so, um, do you feel that now with this whole pan-Africanism and the movement of um, the millennials and the Generation Z looking into the continent, do you feel that it's probably time to start representing stories of our warriors, like kings and our queens that change the narrative from the continent? Why is it that you know, stories like Ya Santua from Ghana, uh, um, Queen Azinga from Angola, uh, Nefertiti from Egypt is not being represented in, in Hollywood. And if you have the opportunity, um, I think, uh, Anika, sorry, which character would you like to play? I feel like that's like the Trent Joloff question. <laughs> and I'm no. going to be in trouble if I pick the wrong girl <laughs> out. <laughs> but um, I. There's a lot of questions. Um, I will start with a yes, that I, I do think it's time to show something else. Um, because, you know, was I born on African soil? No. Is that part of who I am? Absolutely. Do I get tired of a singular narrative? Most assuredly. That was one of the reasons why I really wanted to do Ladies, because I thought, wow, you know, this is a story with Africans just living, just being Africans, just having everyday lives. And there's no war, there's no AIDS, there's no, you know, children sitting on the side of the road with flies in their eye. That was the narrative that had been consistently shown on television. Um, just not, not what I knew of my readings and then now having been to Africa several times to work, I lived in Botswana for six months. It was a great gift. Um, I worked with the great John Connie, which made me very happy. He's such a sweetie pie. Please tell your dad hi for me. I will do. Uh, it was a gift to me to actually be on the soil. I was able to work in Nigeria. I lived there for a month or two doing, uh, doing um, half of a yellow sun. So, each of those experiences, I think, have been great, great gifts and allowed me to see Africa in a very different way than it is portrayed on the screen here. And also, you know, I think that Black Panther was amazing and really changed the landscape. But I also think it's important to show, you know, Africans not as magical beings, but as people who existed. <laughs> and did amazing and wonderful things, which is why they still exist. Yeah. Which is why every time you do a, 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 a sci-fi or something in the future and you don't have no black people in it, you lie. Because there's no way that black folks could have made it through all of the things that they've made it through and we're not gonna make it to space in the future with you. <laughs> you playing yourself with that one, we will be there. <laughs> 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 so. Well, the that's strong. Yes, absolutely, and, and resilient, and we know how to morph for what, what is coming towards us. Um, yeah. Excuse me. So with regard to the queens, I am most enamored. Well, look, I love all of them because they're so specifically different, and Nefertiti is the person that I grew up looking at most often because, you know, she was beautiful, they had a bust of her, it's stunning. What they don't have is a real history of her written down. There's a lot of mystery around what her history was, uh, which makes that something that would not be as truthful because we would be making things up, but still worth being seen. I am, I am intrigued by Nzinga. Yeah. I am intrigued. Quite, a, quite a, uh, a pace setter and a game changer in her, in her own time, in her own world, when she sat on her own maid to be at the same level as the ruler. To me, that was empowering. That was, that was, that was life changing. 
And I think those are the kind of stories that need to be retold because, you know, that we've lost the sense of, you know, the Africanism, the empowerment that we have, the, you know, the, the identity that we have. We come from a rich soil of natural resources, talent, um, history that needs to be recounted. I feel like Hollywood is missing that. Well, yeah. they are missing that, but it's not like they missed it by accident. <laughs> that's not what they want to show. Because if that's what you show, then you have to admit that you made the continent smaller on the map. Then you have to admit that Egypt wasn't white, that it was connected to Africa, that that's where all of these things that you reveal as amazing and you can't quickly quite figure out how it happened, came from the continent of Africa, which at that time was connected to Egypt. So that's no mistake that Africa is represented the way that it's represented. If it's not, then you don't have an excuse for having come in and plundered and stolen people and stolen land and stepped on people's necks and stood there for ages and killed children over languages. You don't have an excuse for that if you show the reality of what was and who people are and people as people. So I think that I would love to play in Zynga of Angola. I think that she's magnificent. I think that the fact that she recognized so deeply what she needed to do, that she changed herself into a man and not in a trans way, but in a... I am going to reconfigure myself to do what I need to do way yes. is remarkable. And her entire reign was such. So that's thrilling to me and I'm talking too much. Well, thank you for that. I think that it's quite encouraging to hear that someone from African descent from Cape Bird, who obviously, um, you know, comes from the continent as well, is willing and gives us hope to represent Africa from this perspective and not so much from the negative perspective that it has already been portrayed as. So thank you for that answer. I'm really, um, pleased to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michelle. Much appreciated. Thank you, Annika. That was really great. I've got a question before I move over to Aisha from Nigeria. I believe Aisha's back, but I want to ask Mr. Lucker a question and that is simply you know south, south africa in fact let me say africa animation has has started taking shape and has started finding a very organic and believable and real voice um in south africa they the there are untold stories you are seeing more brown animation characters that reflect and represent the brown people and possibly their stories. There's a lot of cultural <clears throat> appropriation where our background and our Africanness is used purely as a new story digit, but there's also an organic way of approaching it. Are you seeing a lot of African animation um, films, short films, you know, a series coming out? And if so, is the representation a factor when it comes to animation? Well, I think it's one of the beautiful things about animation is that stories can be mined from, you know, anywhere in the world and characters can be brought to life that kind of embody the culture. Certainly the music can be, you know, used to do that, um, to try and tell the stories of the people from no matter, you know, where they originate. And what's nice is that animation is such a global um, form of content in that even if it's, um, you know, written and produced in the States, it can be um, translated and, um, you, know, you know, the voice can be done in any language in, on any continent around the world. It's one of the things that all the studios in LA really look for. It's universal stories really that'll appeal yeah. to universal audiences because of course they are looking to try and you know a uh make a few bucks and b you know tell a story that will you know ideally instill positive values in kids and empower people no matter what age they are so i think the animation world um you know is at least in in, in the states is always looking for good stories no matter where they come from and if they've kind of um you know dug deep into the u.s 
already and kind of um, dug up everything and, and in some cases, you know, repeated things that we're tired of seeing in the States and the rest of the world, then yeah, they're yeah. constantly looking for, you know, the next Lion King, the next Mulan, the next, you know, whatever, where um, um, there can be a great story told. I will say this, and this comes specifically from my experience in writing movies for Disney, is that they love finding true stories or true legends or true lores that have been um, handed down from generation to generation and using that as the seeds to grow, uh, you know, um, great stories that will appeal to mass audiences. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's a great time really to be in animation. Um, yeah. And um, and hopefully, um, you know, not only uh, U.S.-based studios, but you know, animation studios worldwide will continue to to try and identify, and dig up, and tell the stories of of the untold. Absolutely, man. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for that, sir. Um, Ayesha, I'm going to move straight to you. You've got a question for Enina Nguigwe. Um, and, and you also got a question for Samar Davis. So you are our lucky BET competition winner, and you get to ask both your questions. So over to you, Ms. Saba. She asked me mine early already. Oh, she has? OK, OK. You've got one question. I'm sorry. I'll take it back. OK, Aisha, are you, are you with me? Yes, I see I'm you. Yes, yeah, the noise in the background was too much. OK, no problem. So, um, with us now. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So basically, I wanted to ask him. I've worked with you before, actually, which was amazing. Oh, with you? Oh, and you. Oh, OK. Yeah, I do. No, Mr. Samar, Ms. Iana, Ian, Igwe. Yes, I'm on. Okay. Yeah, you so are. I worked, I worked with you before, which was absolutely amazing. But what I found yeah. more was um, seeing you go across Africa and working with other actors and producers, especially when I saw you working with like likes of like Samad, and I've seen that you're able to network your way around Africa. So my question would be, um, how were you able to go across to different continents and work with different producers and directors? Did you have to use an agent? Will you sign on to an agent or how did this come across? Because usually um, with a di diaspora like Africa, you can't just, people usually don't have agents. They have a PR, a PR team and that's it. But um, mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you actually have an agent in these different countries that actually help you get these jobs. Fantastic. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, hi everyone. I'm so glad to be here. Um, Yes, so I did. You are Nigerian, of course. Uh, you, are you understand that we don't quite have the whole uh, agent approach to working. Somehow it's an uh, opportunity, it's networking, it's, uh, you know, uh, building relationships. Yeah. You know, um, so I kind of using that foundation um, got into the international front through a film, uh, Black November, of course. I had the uh, Oscar winning uh, Kim Bokinga, Mikiwak, Haja, that was my introduction. And uh, like Big Brother Malik said, of uh, whom I'm a big fan of, I'm a designated survivor, by the way. I'm sorry, I, it's, just a, it's just a back the echo. I don't know if there's another device close by that's. Is it just me or? I, yeah, I can always, I can almost hear my I use an earpiece if it helps. Does this help? Yes. That's Does this fair. help? Yep. Okay, fantastic. Fair. Yeah, so um, like uh, Big Brother Malik said, it's uh, firstly grace before you talk about the journey and the adventure. So for the journey, um, Black November introduced me to Hollywood. I was there for quite a while, uh, shooting and reshooting of scenes, coming back to Nigeria briefly and back to Hollywood. So uh, uh, post Black November, I kind of figured, uh, kind of like assessed um, the Hollywood space. Everyone from back home, you know, uh, friends were supporting, oh, wow, our guy is now in Hollywood. But I kind of saw it kind of in a different way. I, I figured I couldn't be more, possibly be more American than uh, Chadwick, for instance. You know, uh, he couldn't be more Nigerian than myself. 
uh, staying back in Hollywood to pursue uh, the career, being that I have opportunity now with the right papers, of course, the old one that allowed me work and everything, and working with the kind of people I worked with would have taken a lot of work, focusing on a lot of things that I can, I, I can actually apply the energy to back home, which was an industry that was growing. You know, I kind of sensed and saw uh, a, a picture of, where, of what the future of Nollywood would be, uh, looking at the trajectory at the point in time, and I knew that, okay, even if I came back home, I didn't want to get back into our straight to DVD films. Uh, we have now the cinema structure growing and with technology running as fast, things were bound to change faster than we could calculate it. So uh, I looked at all those, uh, those factors and I figured, okay, let me go back home, be very intentional about the projects I apply myself to, build a market and have a reason to step into Hollywood and negotiate my, on my terms, you know, in that sense. So it came from a place of, okay, if I did the right films, they would go to cinema and the films that go to cinema go to uh, film festivals. Film festivals are hubs, you know, uh, it's a confluence of all sorts of, of filmmakers from around the world. And then you can find a way to network. And since you don't have the advantage of, uh, uh, of uh, an agent agency kind of like a system, then you can do it on your own and network and, Hopefully you end up on the right platforms and you get seen by more eyes and, you know, that works. New media, emails, the next thing you start to get uh, the self-tape auditions. I am in Joburg Film Festival. I, I meet um, the amazing man here, Samad, uh, in December last year. And by January, I'm working on Kings of Joburg with the amazing Ferguson. You know, so that was always the way I saw it, that if I positioned myself right and if I had the right intention and I did my part of the work, the law of attraction would be in my favor. You know, so pretty much that's how, how it's played out. So it's been one call after the other, one email after the other, and it's still the same answer when I ask, because for me, it's a journey. It's an adventure. It's me also trying to create a path that had not been created before, because there's no actor from Nigeria, Nollywood, literally, that makes a crossover. Black November was a crossover film by a Nigerian producer-director, so I was cast by a Nigerian. So it wasn't like a Hollywood production cast me for the film. But how to cross over into Hollywood was the question after the opportunity, you know. So um, it became a case of trying to uh, connect the dots, you know, do, uh, do, do, do the right positioning and hoping that things uh, will uh, eventually come together. And I'm grateful that uh, pretty much how I, I saw it uh, is pretty much how it's panning out. So now um, it's easier to, to step into a, a space knowing that you have... Um, this body of work, this huge, a nice, uh, decent catalog on Netflix for a Nigerian representation. Yeah, people can hear you speak and realize that you can speak in a way that the world can hear you, not necessarily with an American accent, not necessarily with a British accent, but something that sits right in the middle in a way that you can be a lawyer in a Hollywood film, but then you have an advantage because you're coming with a market. Now we have a market in Africa and Africans consume their own product. So I kind of had to find my own way around navigating that to the point of visibility where I can now say, okay, if I went to Hollywood and I wanted to sit down with a potential or possible agent, what am I coming with? I don't want to be the last in line because I have to get through all of the African-American, um, uh, the black American actors before I pitch myself. But coming with a, a market value of some sort and a body of work from a place that uh, you know, can add value commercially to whatever projects anywhere in the world, being one that believes in possibilities, you know, uh, then, then it's, it, it's most likely going to be a, a lot easier. So my journey has been from positioning and uh, you know, all of that and Grace, of course, uh, covering everything. And yeah, pretty much in that, uh, that line. All right, and you, uh, thank you so much. I hope that was fruitful for you, Shaba. There was a lot of pearls right there that you had to drop. Um, I believe an actor's role, an actor's role is to ultimately make belief, to make anything that they portray believable. So, you know, um, you know, performers determine how believable the characters are together with the work of the creators. Um, otherwise, yeah. yes, why can't you have a Nigerian lawyer in the middle of an American legal drama? That's a reality. Mm -hmm. That's how life works, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, just, just, it's just natural and normal. And now the barriers are broken down, so... Uh, sorry, if you don't mind my dropping a little bit as well. It's, you see, the, the inten intentionality is very important for actors looking to uh, have the crossover appeal. Um, I am no, I am no coach in any way. I can only speak for what worked for me. 
you know, at the end of the day, you realize that all the dots connect when you have put your foot down to make sure you, you try to deliver excellence the much you can. It all builds up with uh, referrals. People refer you and say, yes, here's always on point. Even while everyone is doing things wrong because it, you have a very chaotic society that is reflective in everything else that you do in every other arm and organization. Samad understands Nigeria and the system. He, so he's always in awe of the way we function, mm -hmm. but being able to, you know, put your mind, you know, down and focus and get that done is what reflects and what connects when you ask people, like I always do when I get emails from like Bollywood or Hollywood or any wood that isn't Hollywood. And I'm asking, I'm sorry, but how did you reach me? Because of course my email is in, my, in all my bios on social media, which is very important as well. So they reach me and they say, you know what? We were looking to hire an actor from Nollywood. A few names came up, we researched and which we decided to go with you. A few names came up, we researched, we asked questions, and we fell, we fell, fell with you. So at the end of the day, uh, the, the sense of excellence you portray, which is why I'm very uh, happy about uh, the theme of this thing being uh, Hollywood being um, um, a kind of execution more than a destination, is true because I have always thought about the Hollywood execution and applying the Hollywood sense of excellence in my craft in Africa you know, yeah. and at the point when Hollywood is ready, it's like preparation meets opportunity and it becomes smooth. So it's yeah. easy for me with the confidence to, to switch into an American accent right now that I haven't coached for. So how much more when I train for it, it becomes easier because I know what is expected and experience has been built. I can become British if I wanted to, you know, with the experience I have, you know. So for me, it's like, I always like to use an uh, example across life. 10 plus 10 is 20, 19 plus one is 20. 18 plus two, 15 plus five, you know, eight plus 12, you know, find your 20. It's an open field, so you grab it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Niger, love it. Mm. I'm a big fan of Nigeria. I'm a big fan yeah, of Nigeria. I'm a big fan Nigeria. of South Africa too. <laughs> you know, I still haven't set foot in Nigeria, but it's coming. The next mm. question I have is from my South African sister, Uno Sipo Dumisa. You know, you went from um, producing you know, small budget films, um, in fact, producing and writing, I would say, yeah, you used to, you, you wrote and directed your own film and produced. So, so, so you started working, um, making all of these small budget productions. At some point you decided no more, I'm gonna go straight for the kill and I'm gonna create concepts that I believe in and raise money for and go big. What point was that when you decided enough is enough? Because as a producer, I've produced over nine, you know, small to medium budget TV films, one blockbuster film, and I understand the journey. There was a point where I stopped attending to the brief and the call, but I know what happened with me and what, what moved me internally to just go big and go for the big prize and do it big as you dream big. What was it for you? <laughs> um, hi everyone. First of all, I'm just gonna say I think it's it's it, it's very important to um, put into context what some people might think of as a big budget and what some people might think of as a small yes, budget. I think enough. South African uh, big budget is a very different concept to um, an American big budget or an American medium budget, actually. Um, so I wouldn't say that I've worked with a big budget yet, actually. I think my mindset is big budget, but the, the, the actual budget I have ever worked or touched or anything has never, ever felt like it was big to me. Um, in fact, I think it hasn't been big. Um, but I, I, when, when, when I started my production company with my friends and my colleagues, uh, Gambit Films, when we started it um, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, I have no idea. But... Um, the idea for us was always that we were wanting to make our stories, um, but not just for our people. We wanted to tell our stories and we wanted them to reach the world. And we were obsessed with genre. So at every opportunity, every single thing we've ever done has always been with the intention to be able to tell bigger, better stories, and also to be able to tell stories that anyone in the world will relate to and anyone in the world will understand and a quality yeah. that we love. I, I, I grew up um, watching um, a lot of South African TV, some South African films, but I think what I was consuming the most were uh, Western films. 
um, um, Hollywood films, specifically Hollywood content. My parents made the mistake of getting me a TV and they put it in my room and I would stay up late at night and I would watch whatever was on TV at any given time. So genre was something I consumed. So for me, the first opportunity that I got to actually start to make films were through short films and and even in the short films everyone is always kind of looking at looking at us looked at us as gambit films as the audacious group of kids we were those audacious kids who would come with these big ideas and everyone would tell us they're not going to work you don't have money you don't have the skill you don't have what it takes and we would just go out there and try and do it and most times we did it and we did it well. Um, we've still got a short film that we did called Precious Metal, which is like a, a little sci-fi short that we've shopped around, but that led, you seen it? <laughs> it was it was like, it was, you know, we were doing that with nothing. We literally had I no was, money, we did that. Yeah. We begged yeah. everyone favors, like, come on guys, let's do this. And even when we did um, number 37 as a short film, we knew yeah. our, our budget for what it, the real amount on screen was way more than what we had really? to work with. Really? That's always, it, it's always been our, 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 our approach in, in how we make anything. And, and I believe, the, and I want to just touch on what was said just before now is that, you know, it's such a, it's a mentality and you attract the things that you put out. If you want something yeah. and you work for it and you're passionate in it and you don't think of the limitations around you, but you rather think, well, there's so many ways it's going to catch. How do I do it? Then you do it and you go for it. So now I'm working on a, a, on a Netflix series and a lot of people think, oh, big budget. But again, it's a Netflix local series. It's, it's, it's a Netflix original, but it's done in the South African context. It's a bigger budget than I've ever worked but I know there's more. And I think at every point is to look at what do I have now? Where do I want to go? And, and how do I take what I have now and get it and, and let it take me to where I want to go? Um, number 37, short film opened a door to do a soapy. Um, that soapy gave me bread in my tummy to keep me going to oh, then go, so okay, um, stay twisted on uh, cake next. Um, Ooh, Which, sweet, by the way, sweet. I never thought I would do Afrikaans. I don't speak Afrikaans. I just want to be very clear. I don't speak Afrikaans. But I was ready for an opportunity. Opportunities came. I was like, okay, I'm doing it. Whatever. Let's, let's, let's go for it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 and, and, and that kept us going long enough to then be able to do our feature film, Number 37, which then finally had the world premiere. And by the way, we did a short film of Number 37, and we submitted that to South by Southwest. And it was declined. They didn't take it. And we were audacious oh. enough to go, well, we're submitting it again as a feature film now. And you have to pay attention now because it's bloody good. And we had no money to make it. So we really need you to like it. So other people will know about it. And, um, and you know what, we were, we were lucky enough that based off that short film, we had a sales agent, an American sales agent who took note of the short and said, we want to rip the feature before the feature was even done. And, and, and that helped us get into South by Southwest, which then helped me give representation in the States, which then helped the Netflix deal happen. And now we're doing a series, um, which is a South African local, but we also, I'm also co-writing a feature for, a net, for Netflix, um, which is Netflix North America. And I think for me, it's, you have to always know where you're going. And it's not a moment that you switch. It's from the beginning, know where you're going and every opportunity is yeah. used to get you there. Okay, um, that is just, you know, it's so inspiring to hear it. I think sometimes people's own words, you know, like they say, if, if, if the lion tells the story of the jungle, then the lion will always be the king of the jungle. But give the pen to the ant for a second and you'll hear a special story. So for me, I, I really enjoy hearing the perspectives, you know, um, I live in South Africa with you, but the detailed version that I'm getting from you is really inspiring. Big up for that. And thank you so much. We've got Michael from the USA, um, who's got a question for Annika. Do we have Michael? Is Michael with us? Mike Michaels. Yeah, I'm here. How y'all doing, everybody? How you doing, Mike Michaels? I'm pretty Sounds like good. a superstar name, Mike Michaels. In the making, brother. All of us in the making. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so my question is for Anika. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations, Rattler. I'm a fellow Rattler as well. So big shout out um, to you. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so you've played a wide 
range of roles from dream girls to power to being Disney's first African American princess. Like there's the versatility is amazing. Um, what advice could you give to up and coming actors about continuously reinventing themselves? And also how does your experience working internationally in Africa differ if at all from any other places and how you approach your characters? I, I would tell actors want coming up now doing, you know, wanting to be in this to be nosy, pay attention to everybody. I watch people and, and I always have because I find people intriguing. Um, and I think that's a big part of being able to go from one person to another person, you have to be able to find things outside of yourself to represent the characterization. Now, there are some people who make entire careers playing themselves in different costumes with different scripts, and it works, and they're rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I'm not knocking that either. For me, I find it intriguing to be able to, um, to embody someone else um, as completely as I can. Um, you know, there will always be parts of you that come with you because you are a complete human being, but it is really important to pay attention to the people around you and lay your, lay your personal ego down to find someone else. Um, and I don't mean ego as in pride, I mean it as in, you know, you, the you that is inside of you. Um, second question you asked, do I attack character differently because of international work? No, I don't think I attack character differently. What I have been able to do because of international work, for example, the first, the pilot that we did for Number One Ladies Detective Agency, um, what happened? Can 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 people mute? Can everybody mute um, the the background while we? Michael, are you still there? Mike, Michael, Michael still there? Yeah, yeah Mike. Okay. Still there. So, for the pilot episode, I only actually shot for eleven days, and I. I was allowed, Anthony Minghella was so magnificent, who was the director, writer. I lived in Botswana for that pilot for two months. I shot for 11 days. When I tell you I was everywhere in Botswana, in the morning, the women who cleaned in the hotel that I lived in, I lived on the bottom floor and it was sort of like a, um, it was almost like a bed and breakfast. It was more of a house than a hotel, which I loved and the food was exquisite. And uh, these women would come through in the morning and they would be doing their jobs and doing their work and I would hear them talking to themselves. Now, anytime you hear people, people especially in, in service jobs, when they address you as the person who is receiving their service, their energy, their speak, their demeanor is going to be different. When you hear people speaking with themselves, and people who they consider to be, who they don't have to serve, who they don't have to be something else for, that's when you hear a true person. So every morning, I would hear these women come doing their jobs, not knowing that I was listening. And because of that, the things that weren't written in the script were things that I was able to bring, like, eh, eh, oh, all of those sounds and exclamations and some words that I don't remember right now um, that I added to the script because of these women that I heard every day. I went to a wedding in the bush. I went and ate at people's houses. I was as much of the land as I could possibly be. And I made friends in Botswana that if I called today would stay, say, come, stay with me. Um, and that was a gift for me. Like, I was so happy. Um, and I also gained a lot of weight because I ate a lot while I was there. It was the best beef I think I've ever <laughs> had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very, so very that's good meat what, out there. Oh, so good. <laughs> and I don't understand how people 
are so fit, well, they walk everywhere. So everybody's walking, but it is, it is meat and some carbs. <laughs> and that's, that's what you eat. Don't worry about everything that's else. Meat and a carb. <laughs> <laughs> and I ate it. So I think that it's really important to have those experiences. And I think that I've been really blessed to be able to have those experiences because baby, if the number one latest detective agency had been an American show, you better believe I would not have been in Botswana for two months. If I had to shoot for 11 days, I might've been there for 15 days. <laughs> well, she needs five days because of jet lag, but other than that, shoot her in, shoot her out. Um, so I was really blessed to be able to have that adventure and that feeling of home while I was there. I didn't feel, I was made to feel so very welcome um, and it was a glorious experience. So anytime that you can immerse yourself into a culture, into people, and that's how I like to travel anyway. I'm not, I'm not the type of person who wants to travel and stay at the resort. That's cute. I need air conditioning. So for that reason, I might stay at a resort because I have asthma. But I want to eat where the people eat. I want to hang where the people hang because otherwise you don't know the culture. You know a restaurant trying to serve you food that they think that you want to eat. And it'll never be the same as the food you want to eat from home. Why wouldn't you figure out what the people there eat and, and, and allow your taste buds and your person to open up to that? It's about taking in culture. Um, and so that's something that is very important and gift. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Michael, I hope you're happy with that. Mr. Michaels, that's a lot. You know, you asked one question, you've got at least 10 gems to take home with you. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Thank um, you all. And that's really, really, really beautiful. Um, we're going to close this segment. We are trying to keep up with time. We are running slightly behind, but there's so much to extract. In closing, I'm going to ask Atan Dwakani, you know, just to close this segment, and then I'm going to move on to segment three. Um, so, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Nosipo. I want to ask you so many more questions. I think we should do this again, people. At some uh -huh. point, it can happen again. <laughs> if you don't mind, we should. Before you move we on. should. If you can just, I think it's very important for everybody to know or hear about Michael yeah. Luther's, um screenwriting school. Yes, so I'm about to go to Michael. Before um, you release him from the segment, I just wanted to remind you of that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I've got, I've, uh, I'm definitely on to that. I want to hear something from Michael regarding the screenwriter of, um, um, school, of course. Um, one of, you know, I'm with one of my writers here in my home studio, and um, he's, he's our head writer, and he wants to know more about the school. And, of course, I want... a Tandwa before Michael, um, before Mr. Lacker, actually, to just encapsulate what it means for an African actor or actress um, um, building an acting brand that is unforgettable or almost irreplaceable. You know, there's, there, there's obviously going to be a point where there's a lot of African talents trying to storm or flood a Hollywood space where the majority of films are being made or, or, or international shows. But how do you keep your brand alive and relevant through all of it? There's so much for us to deal with, you know, um, new territory, new environment. How do you make it work? Or how are you navigating this um, brand of yours and, and, and finding your own voice and not just as Mr. John Carney's son, but as the prince of theater. Sorry, Dr. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard, you know, because as soon as you come here, you're told to almost switch, almost, uh, in my personal experience, to uh, the American way. You know, you can't come here if you don't have in your archives, you know, certain dialects, British dialect, American dialect. Um, so it seems as if you're being asked to to change the way you talk, the way you perceive things, the way you, the way you listen, the way you interact. But you got to realize, as you said, um, Africa is that spice. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. When, when you, when you, if you come here as an African, you got to understand that you, you are that spice. So as much as you can change the way you talk, as much as you can change the way that you relate to people, as much that you can learn in New York or LA or Atlanta, you always walk with 3,000 ancestors behind you. And that is undeniable. So can I add to that though, because I feel like right now you 
as Africans coming to the United States, yes, know all that other stuff, but I think there is a great desire in Hollywood for your authentic selves now. And that may yeah. be new. Oh, yeah. That may be new, but do not release that that is of you. Because I'm telling you, I've, there are times when they don't even let us in the room because they want yeah. something else. So I just want to just say, now is the time. <laughs> and since, since we're talking about how do we individually navigate Hollywood, um, I think and this is um, when I met Samad Davis and his objective was to build and bridge the gap between Africans and African Americans. And it's and I took that upon myself too, as, as, an, as an artisan in the world. And I find out when I, when I got to New York or the United States, we cannot ever be unified until our narrative of our own history is unified. Because I was watching this film and someone said, uh, oh no, you African, so you were passed away, so you got away and we were being suffering through slavery. And immediately I wanted to respond and say, no, hold on, but we were colonized and then there was apartheid which became a law and then we were imprisoned. And it's almost as if we have a Stockholm Syndrome show off in a, in a weird way. I think that's very interesting because I also think that, and this is not me trying to be better than, smarter than, more worldly than anyone, but I think that there is a lack of knowledge in America of our history. And when I say our history, I mean yours and mine together and what that means. So we've pasted together tidbits of something that we know, and we know that we have a connection of pain, but there's a yeah. lot that is that people just aren't aware of. I mean, the amount of times that I've heard people call Africa a country. <laughs> I'm like, well, well <laughs> <laughs> a little more than a country, but that's, we can work with, we can work on it. Um, you know, there's just a lack of awareness. And I think, um, you know, thank God for Black Panther, because even though it is a myth, it's a, it's a fake story, it has inspired people to want to know more. And more importantly, it's inspired children to want to know more. So when you start with young people, we have the opportunity to teach and learn from each other in a very different way. And I think because of technology now, I mean, the fact that we're all sitting here together at different times of our particular days, having this conversation, we do have the opportunity to be more open. And I think that it's important for us to have these conversations because there's always something to learn. I think that you know, as Americans, we have so much to learn still about ourselves and our own histories because it's been plundered and torn apart and burned and messed up. And, and then, you know, before we even get to the journey that took us here, and what is the thing that connects us? And I think that there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of animosity on both sides towards the other person and whose history is a better history and who did what to who and how did you even end up a slave or we wouldn't have been slaves if you know there's a lot and I think that a lot of that is sold by the the history that has been given to us in books and the constant desire to pit us against each other unfortunately I, I, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to jump in because I know you're trying to close. So I'm going to be very quick. I just wanted to, to, to add something quickly that I think is so important to, to for, especially as Africans, as young filmmakers, I'm speaking for myself and other young filmmakers I know, I think a lot of us yeah. have never seen a lot of representation of ourselves on screen, but as, as filmmakers as well. And for a long time, the dream is to get somewhere else as opposed to looking at what we have here. I think what's so incredible about what's happening with technology and streamers like Netflix, like all the others that are coming out, um, is the opportunity now to be able to create these stories that are coming out of Africa, whether it be Nigeria, whether it be Angola, whether it be South Africa, whether wherever it is, 
with our faces that are reaching the world as a way of educating and sharing our stories with Americans, with whoever else is in, you know, in the Western world. And I think stories like that are going to really try to change things. And yes, Black Panther was so important. Um, I love Black Panther. And I think what's going to be great now is seeing Africans telling African stories and telling them not just for each other, but telling them for the world. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think opportunities like that, like Queen Sono um, did that, and that was really incredible. Land Water will hopefully do that soon. But all the new films and stories that are being developed that are coming out, and the world is getting to experience them, and we're not diluting the African narrative. Um, we are telling stories, like you mentioned, and where, where it's about Africans just living their lives. It's not about pain and suffering and 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 and, and slavery and, and and apartheid. It's stories that are about yeah what Africans are doing now. Um, I think that for me is the most exciting thing. Um, and that for me is what navigating Hollywood as an individual in this. I don't have to be living in, in the United States to be able to reach the world. I'm doing it from here. Also allowing the truth of, the fa of what the diaspora is. You know, there are so many times that people are saying that we, oh, well, they weren't there. Well, yeah. I've yeah. been to the Louvre <laughs> and I've seen many pictures of times where supposedly we weren't there and there I am in the corner. You know what yeah. I mean? We have been so <laughs> Tom Jones can't sing a song without me looking at his hair. We were there too. So it is very important for us to really not allow ourselves to be put and kept in one place because we don't exist in one place. That's yes. very true. Everywhere. That's very true. Thank you so much for that. That's that's the wealth in all of this, my lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that, Annika. I'm gonna go straight to you, Mr. Lucker, so you can help us close off this very segment. Um, it is it is tough. We're gonna have to race to the last segment, um, but we're gonna extract the value. We're gonna get there. We're almost there. So, Mr. Lucker. Over to you, sir. My writer here wants to know how your school, um, firstly, tell us about your screenwriting school and how do writers get a chance to show each, other, each other's work um, outside of the norms that we know, the markets, you know, um, um, the sales agents. How do we, how do script, how do writers amongst themselves start trading content and helping each other get the cultural nuances right helping each other understand how to translate different cultures, especially African cultures and cultures outside of America, for example, in your case. Sure, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we got you. Great. Um, so to answer your first question, um, I've been fortunate to be teaching screenwriting at universities here in Atlanta since I came back here from Los Angeles and also launched my own workshops called Screenwriter School. And as uh, uh, Samad mentioned, um, I got a, one coming up, uh, starts next week. For the longest time, I've been teaching them at Emory University, and it's been a weekend workshop. But now, because of what we're all going through, I'm taking my workshops online. So students literally anywhere in the world can join us um, every Saturday for six weeks from May 16th to June 20th, from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And to sign up, they just go to screenwriterschool.com and all the information is on there. Um, and then I will send a link and then uh, you'll get basically 12 hours of me teaching um, you how to write screenplays the Hollywood way. So that's one thing. There's also um, forums and chat groups and alumni groups we put together through the Screenwriter School on Facebook. You can follow it there too. Um, so that people who are learning to write scripts can commune with one another, get feedback from one another, and um, um, ultimately share their ideas, as you're saying. In addition, there's all kinds of great programs out there. Um, in order to share your work with the world, one thing to consider is uh, blacklist.org. Um, if you all don't know that, it's a great place to get your content out there in the world for, you know, uh, developers, studios, networks, agents, managers, buyers of all sorts yeah. see from everywhere. And also film festivals um, continue to be a great place, you know, that offer um, an opportunity for screenwriters to have their work read, if yeah. not seen as a film. Yeah. 
And uh, the best website that we use, you guys all probably know for getting your films out there is Film Freeway. And I think it's filmfreeway.com. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is that there's about 900 screenwriting contests that are on there um, in addition to the film festival contest. Yeah. So it's a great way to kind of generate exposure. And it's a great way that we can bring all this information to the fore and really empower um, um, the artist um, all over the world, especially our continent, you know, of the beautiful Africa. Thank you so much, Mr. Laka. Thank you so much to Thank every you. single person. You know, no sipo, nyabonga siswami. That's Zulu for thank you. Those of you who don't understand, nyabonga. Bonga mina. Bonga mina putwa nyabonga. Yeah, man. Thank you, Mr. Laka. Enyina. Nwige. Thank you, brother. I'm coming to Nigeria. You're the first man I'm calling. Um, um, thank you, Atando Akani. Bro, I, I, I pray for all of you out there in New York, and I cannot wait to see you guys again. Keep doing you, my brother. I appreciate it so much. Miss Annika Noni Rose, you're an inspiration. You are what I call a screen siren. You light up the screen whenever you're on it, and I appreciate getting to interact with you through the digital godly platform that we have going on. Much love and respect. Segment two is done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank, you, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Yes, thank cool. you, everybody. So, um, Atandwa, love you, bro. We love you. Take care. Um, segment three, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move straight to it. Thank you so much to my BET competition winners. You guys are phenomenal. I'm loving the questions. Um, so much to learn, so much to know. The next segment, which is the final segment as we race against time, but please, I ask you all to just bear with us. Segment two panelists, if you want to stay and join the third segment, please do. If you do exit, it's all love and it's all respect. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep shining. Our next panelist group consists of these amazing individuals. I'm going to run through them as best as I can. So we have, first and foremost, um, leader at BET Africa, um, Mr. Monde Twala, the man who helps keep the continent abreast and helps keep us all connected by giving us a pathway and a portal to great content, but also providing us platforms to make sure that we can express our African artistry for the global scale and for the global audience. Smiley, Mr. Twala, welcome to the conversation and welcome to the room. Sanmanani, hey everybody. How you doing? How you doing, sir? How you doing? Uh, you are doing yeah. and you are feeling. How are you doing under lockdown and how's quarantine life? Uh, you, you still have all your hair? Uh, no, it's all gone. <laughs> but it's, not, it's, it's gone from the stress. It's more stress than anything now. All is good. Um, excited to be on this forum panel. Um, I've been listening yeah. in. It's, it's, uh, it's been great knowledge sharing. Um, and uh, I think this is what, uh, that's the power of, uh, that's the power of being African now is that we've got so much knowledge and uh, experience, a wealth of knowledge and experience. Um, and by sharing, um, I think we can collectively, you know, definitely change the space. Um, yeah. I'm more excited about, you know, shifting, you know, I'm more excited about shifting the topic. Uh, I'm more excited about how, how the world uh, positions itself in Africa. And, and, and obviously I think, um, you know, from, from where we are now, you know, I think uh, a, a, few, a few people on the, uh, on the panel have expressed the, the great opportunity that Africans have in terms of the authenticity of the African story um, is, is quite a game-changing approach. I think the world, the world is run out of stories, they, and Africa's, uh, Africa's next. Absolutely. It's like I say, you know, we are that spice. The world is like, let's try something new. You know, let's open the top drawer. We right there. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you. Next, we have in this amazing group, um, a man who has, you know, shaken screens for a very long time and consistently without any sign of stopping. Um, this man is a 
you know, is, is a, a martial artist. He's an actor. He is a director. He will, will kick your ass on the Zoom live right now, you know, and, 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 and get away with it. That's how slick he is. You know, I've, I've watched this man's movies for a very long time. He is consistent and he is running his own lane in Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't clap. Oh, in fact, we can clap or we can give a big thumbs up for my man, Mr. Michael. Um, Mr. Michael Jai White. I'll say it again. Michael Jai White. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to join you. Thank you for joining us, you and your entire voice. Okay, you, you're rumbling through all the, the countries, you know. Um, mm. welcome, to, welcome to the platform and welcome to the room, Michael. I have so many questions for you. I had a good six questions and my team told me to tone it down because we don't have that much time. <laughs> so I've got one or two for you. So I hope you can stick around for those questions as well as the BET winners. Mm. Um, the third panelist that we have on this group is a lady that I've just recently gotten to meet because she is the co-producer and co-founder of the Blueprint series amongst um, many other things that she does. She's also the co-producer um, and, and, and she is, you know, founder of um, w, WSA um, and she works hand in hand with Samad. I've gotten to research her and really know more about her offering um, in casting, in creating, and building careers. Um, you know, um, when I first saw her face, I was like, is that Oprah on our group? I was like, w when we had our first Zoom, I was like, is that, am I seeing right? And, and I got to know her, Miss Winsome Sinclair. Welcome, my lady. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, gosh, this is so humbling to see these amazing panelists. Thank you, Capella. Your, your voice and your guidance is helping us traverse this so seamlessly. And, you know, when I even thought of the Blueprint series 18 years ago in 2002, I had no idea that this day would come. I am I'm, I'm truly humbled to hear the conversation that we're finally having across the waters, across the continent to Africa. And um, I'm inspired not only to be here today, because I feel like even with all the social distancing, I feel very present and connected to everybody that's been on this, on this Zoom. So um, what happens from here, I am sure will be magical because um, you know, we are a people that can create and make you know, um, magic anywhere. So, and thank you to every single panelist. We could not have done this without you. And most especially thank you to um, my brother who took us across the water, um, Samad, thank you so much for being the captain to steer this ship and making this happen. And everybody on the team, my partner here in, in um, Atlanta, everybody on the Blueprint team here in the United States, we are thankful to every one of you guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me, I should say. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Winsome. Thank you so much for making this whole entire experience a reality. It's really, really phenomenal. I'm learning a thing or two or 10, to be quite honest. Um, and last but not least, in fact, second to last, um, we have got a lady who is a powerhouse actress, um, producer, businesswoman. Um, and from what I've seen recently this week, just following her on the social media, um, a, quite a, you know, an, a, an undying and resilient philanthropist. I see all the work that she's doing um, throughout this tough time across the world, especially in Ghana. You know, a power woman, a powerhouse, a force, you know, um, incredible, incredible individual. I would like to welcome to this room, Miss Jocelyn Dumas. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Yes, it's okay. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Jocelyn, thank you so much. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Jocelyn. We really, you know, I'm clicking like every time I see you changing lives and helping people. It's really beautiful. And um, yeah, we, we, we appreciate that. Last, but not forever and not least, you know, because we're going to do this again. This lady is the lady that was quite instrumental in my breaking out in the film and TV industry. 
I starred alongside her in my first big TV role that introduced me to the South African market on a soapy called Generations. She was not only um, a big name then, but she was such a sister and she was so accommodating when I was intimidated to work across such a powerhouse on my first big production in South Africa. But she was kind and she guided me and mentored me from a distance. And I could never forget those moments because I'm standing here today, almost 20 years in my career. Um, so a woman I really appreciate and a woman that the entire nation of South Africa appreciates. Um, a powerhouse, a producer, a fine actress, and a family woman and a businesswoman who has built a brand and expanded on so many levels and taught us a lot about endorsement deals and branching out into corporate as an artist. Ladies and gentlemen, lastly, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Connie Ferguson of Ferguson Films. She, she, she's, going to be joining, she's going to be joining us shortly, one sec. She was on earlier. She just Let me guess. Up. She's running an empire, isn't she? <laughs> Queen, <laughs> Queen Ferguson. She will join on, back on. So you can just... All right, cool. No problem. 100%. So that is our last panel. And I'm going to get straight to it. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for stay, sticking around, Atandwa and, and uh, segment two panelists. The first question is to um, the man in charge of BET Africa, the leader himself, um, Mr. Monde Twala. Your question is coming all the way from Uganda. We are connecting the continents as Blueprint series. Um, Miss Anita Fabiola, is she, is she with us? Do we have Anita um, in the room? Yeah. Yeah, she's right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, hi. Can you are hear you me? Doing, Anita? I'm great. How are you? I'm very good, my sister. We can hear you very well. Fire yeah. away, Monde, listening to you. Yeah, well, this is a very, very iconic group of panelists. Very, very honored. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Monde, usually East African countries are left out by the corporations, by the storytellers, by the content creators. And most times they say it's because we don't have enough numbers or there's not enough buying power. So they usually do not give a chance to our content, to our stories. And you find that most times it's either West Africa or South Africa, that is um, South Africa, of course, then Nigeria, Ghana. So East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, are usually left out of these conversations. So my question is how do we be part of these conversations without necessarily having to um, change our area code and maybe move to Nigeria or move to South Africa for us to, you know, be part of these huge platforms and um, tell our stories as East Africans. I'm a hundred percent. I think, I think just to kick it off, I think, I think, um, you know, there's kind of the usual uh, suspects when it comes to, um, when it comes to content creation or platforms, uh, to be honest. So South Africa, as you know, you know, uh, I think from an infrastructure perspective, South Africa is quite, uh, uh, quite established. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the Nigeria market in terms of just Nollywood and how the scene and the entertainment scene has evolved over time uh, has also been, um, you know, um, um, a, a good step in the right direction. Um, you know, I, I, I do think Kenya is, from an industry perspective, if you look at just the, the, the broadcast and, uh, and, and production industry in Kenya, it's also, it's also coming up um, um, and growing. Um, I, I, for me, it's ultimately down to, you know, um, you know, it has to obviously also make business sense. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm a great believer in, in, in what we do as, as, a, as a platform and as a network. Um, you know, we, we do have Pan-African reach. We have, uh, and we have different projects. Funny enough, I have a, I have a project I'm working on uh, right now um, that will, uh, in, uh, in Kampala, in Uganda, Kampala, um, uh, for one of the one of the MTV uh, brands, um, so so you know. But Great once again, it is 
it's <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll look, look, look out on our, on our, on our platforms. We'll, we'll probably make announcements soon. Um, the, the opportunity, I think it's there. I think it's, it's about structure. I think, I think, you know, it, it, that's, you know, Uganda or, 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 or Tanzania cannot kind of be Hollywood immediately. I think we all have to conquer, um, you know, conquer our own territories and before we try and conquer Hollywood. I think let's start at home. Uh, organize, you know, organized structures are, are important. Um, I think collaboration and, 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 and different models. I mean, I think, I think Samad and I always talk about how do we evolve business models? Um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard just now panel, pa some of the panelists talking about doing, you know, starting, starting off from, you know, from a base of, and a foundation of doing short form, and then you, you, you build uh, into the long form um, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, model. Um, it's not easy to navigate. I'm not going to say it's easy because it is about, it is ultimately about resources. Um, but funny enough, it's also about innovation. Um, I think, I think, you know, who, who knew that such a wealth of, 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 of uh, experience can be on one forum, people across the world, different time zones, all at the same time. So that's innovation. So it's going to take a bit more innovation in how we, we, we conquer the, the, or how the continent can conquer a, a more Pan-African approach. From a BT perspective, I think for the last five years, that's what we've been trying to do, trying to see how we can, you know, obviously steadily, you know, gain scale in terms of the projects that we do on the continent. Uh, we do reach, you know, 49 uh, countries across the continent, but you also have to understand that each country has its own nuance, uh, I think as Africans, we are so diverse in culture, taste, language, uh, that we can't get anywhere. Um, but I think the most important thing is about just being organized. Um, I think speaking to some of the points raised earlier, being passionate and being intentional of what you want to do and what project you want to do. And then, and then, and then just building a network to, 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 get, to, to, to get to produce and, um, and implement um, but there's a great knowledge. I mean, it depends also on the genres. Uh, you know, I think in the, in the music scene, the East is popping in terms of uh, the music scene, which is where we play more in the music scene in the East. Um, uh, but, you know, documentaries, uh, scripted uh, genres are also starting to pop up. Um, and I think it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Um, we need more forums like this that can unite um, um, yeah. and, and unite then to then open up to new projects and new opportunities. But I, from a Viacom CBS perspective, for us, you know, we are building a Pan-African, um, you know, we are a pan -African looking for Pan-African opportunities. Um, you know, so we want to work, we're open for business. We want to work with anyone. Um, okay. Concepts uh, that, are, that are broad, um, but it has to be concepts with ability to travel, concept that can uh, that can also inspire i think you know because ultimately we do this for audiences um mm -hmm. uh, but there's no african narrative you know I, I, I don't like kind of giving this sense of like there's an i think the african narrative is so diverse it can be one um because we are different you know we we come from different backgrounds cultures languages experiences but a good script is a good script guys if you if you watch uh, the latest stuff we're all watching Narcos and it's you know it's in Spanish and we're good, we're good. you know we're all binging and and are passionate yeah. about it it's, if the script is good it has to be that, that, that travels uh, and can inspire other people you know good storytelling is universal um, um, yeah. but we can't also just you know just expect it to happen we need the structure and the business models and let's keep innovating in that space Okay. Absolutely. Got it. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. You happy, Anita? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Monde. Appreciate that one, sir. Um, we're going to move straight on. We've got a couple of questions. I think two questions. Please try and make them quick and encapsulate them for Mr. White, Mr. Michael Jai White. These questions are coming from Liane Huete. Liane Huete, do we have you in our room? Is she with us? 
Liane Kwete, one of our BET question winners. If she is uh, not in the room, she is yeah. she here? Yes. Yes, she's there. Oh, uh, welcome, 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 welcome. Where are you? We don't do I see you. There you are. Hello. You've been here the whole time. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? Oh, so, good. Oh, good. Oh, uh, my yeah. question for Mr. White. So the first question would be that uh, because your fighting style is to not be seen coming. So my question, are, my questions are basically like for personal development. And so, and you also have said that you have a hard time portraying fear. What, it, what does it take for you to make a necessary mental switch when you are in a situation that requires vulnerability and not tact in whether a role that you're acting or in real life? Well, um, with, uh, with being a martial artist, um, I use certain aspects of the martial arts and everything in my life, which is really the most important thing is discipline. And so with, this, with the art of acting, which I've, you know, I've been doing as a professional separate from martial arts, uh, I, I then just apply that, that um, resilience and that discipline to acting. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I know I mentioned at one time, one of the most difficult things for me to play is, is um, fear. Uh, because um, I, it's, it's something that um, yeah, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. I, I tend to um, not be very feel, fearful in life. And so th to play the opposite of what I have, what I am, is just an acting, it's just kind of an acting e exercise. But it's really not too difficult um, when I have to do it. I really don't have a lot of... Uh, roles where I'm quite fearful. I have moments, but um, it's, not, it's not so much of an obstacle. Uh, so just the acting background, I just, you know, it's just a switch that I can remember when I'm, you know, I tap into when I was quite younger and might have um, uh, that kind of feeling. Okay. Thank so um, the much. second question, obviously, second question. would be that, how easy or difficult was it for you to meet and navigate the mindset of the kids you were a special education teacher to? Well, um, it wasn't, wasn't difficult for me at all. I've been on my own since I was 14 years old. Uh, I, one of the reasons you know, connected to the whole fear thing is that I've, um, I've had a life that there's a lot of things that you might see in the movies that I experienced firsthand. Uh, I didn't realize how crazy my life was till I got out of it. But um, I've, uh, you know, so I've had quite a dramatic life, a lot of street fighting, shootouts, things like that. And I survived that. Um, I was able to, I found I had a, 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 a skill in reaching children who were very much like myself. Uh, so I, I, I wound up teaching special ed, dealing with kids who were, like I say, who were, were like me, so I understood them um, quite, quite profoundly. I, I consider myself as one of the luckiest human beings on the planet because of where I came from and where I am now. So I'm still quite, um, I'm quite committed in, uh, in um, outreach programs for kids who were like me and and I, and I you know I, I do motivational speaking around the around the world not only this country but everywhere I go I, I reach out to that because I my my firm belief is that I, I was saved for a reason so I, I share that wherever I go thank you very much amazing thank you very much um thank you thank you thank you Liam that was yeah that was great Michael thank you for just breaking knowledge there with us. Um, I'm going to ask the next question to my sister, Miss Jocelyn Dumas, um, out in Ghana. Um, you do so many things as an artist um, who has put her fingers in all sorts of places like producing, 
Um, you've captivated different parts of Africa with the work that you do through your philanthropy journey. Um, you also run this production company, this entity that has already begun the journey to working hand in hand with um, streaming services that are global and that are that are that are that have wide reach, like your Netflix um, platforms and your Amazon Prime platform. So you already that African force that is already trading content, and you know you you are walking the bridge, you know um, that trades content and trades stories and and especially African stories. How did that come about? How did you navigate that entire you know um, flow for yourself? that journey well thank you for having me hi everyone i am so honored to be part of this um, incredible panel i listened earlier and i took a few things a, a few notes so samad this is great thank you for doing this bet thank you thank you guys um it hasn't been easy um i own a production company but i haven't done things solely i've co-produced a few of my content with a production company here in ghana called sparrow productions and I think that the thing that stands out and works for the production house that I work with, including mine, is the fact that we tell quality African stories. Um, I think that once your work is good, it's easy for uh, the likes of the Amazon Primes and the likes of Netflix to want to put your content on there. So. Um. She's just, is she frozen on my side only or? Oh, is, is she frozen on everyone? Okay. Let's try. Sorry, everybody, please just bear with us. Um, I think she's having connection problems. Yeah, she froze. So we're gonna just possibly just let's give it a um, just a couple of seconds. Hopefully she does come back. Otherwise, we are going to try and move on to the next question and we can come back. She's to... back. She's back. She's back. Okay. Yes. Jocelyn. She's on mute. You're on mute, okay. Jocelyn. And you froze. She's still on mute. Are you there, Jocelyn? I, I mute your phone. I'm mute. Oh, you're on you're on mute. You're on, you're on mute, Jocelyn. Yes, got you. That's much. Yeah. Yeah, I think you. That's we got you. If you can just take that from the top. Um, we lost you pretty early in the in in, in your in your, in your oh, talk there. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, uh, well, like I said earlier, I'm sorry, uh, but um, I think that it it it's not. It's just a matter of working hard and shooting original content, telling an African story by us, and not saying you know changing the narrative a little bit more by showing the most beautiful parts of of, of Ghana as well. So I think that it has to do with quality, hard work, and um, you know you know persistency. You know just believing in something and going for it. So for instance, Sparrow Production will shoot a movie and portray, not portray the African woman as the, the stereotypical African woman who is probably uh, being abused or, or, you know, and I'm choosing my words carefully, but we, we try to portray the African woman as that strong, a woman who can who can become a president if she wants to, or who who can get anything she wants to get. So with with contents like this, I mean, it's not you're not far from having like the likes of the Netflix and the Amazon Primes wanting to have your content. And obviously, the quality of the production is key. So we're using yeah. the right using you know the right technical support and obviously the right story. It's always important. Very true. Very true. Very true. Um, I've got so many questions for you, but I'm going to leave it there for now and come back to you later. Okay. I, we've also got a miss, um, a, a miss, I think it's a Mr. Theron Smith. Do we have Theron Smith um, in the room with us? Yes, sir. You are here. Oh, there you are, sir. A fellow gray brother. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> I earn these grays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Mr. Smith, I know you've got a question for the entire panel, my good sir. Unfortunately, that is not going to be possible because of time purposes. Can you just pick who you want your question to be directed to? Well, I, actually, um, actually, the question was answered. Um, I, I got a couple of answers. Uh, I think the biggest picture is what I wanted to find out was 
do we have uh, any specific alliances, organizations, or specific production companies that's leading the charge in trying to get American and, and uh, African creatives together to work projects together uh, in, in a more concrete alliance? For example, um, think about the academy. The academy spans across all different uh, uh, industries, but they still house the attention within their boundaries. Do you get what I'm saying? So if we as a diaspora had one unit to uh, kind of put us all together, help put creators together, get uh, uh, Nigerian Nollywood actors to work with American actors and vice versa and stuff like that. I was just wondering if we had an actual concrete uh, organization uh, um, that's working towards that opposed to um, it just being these chance situations that created yeah. to get to work with each other? Do we have a actual foundation that's bringing these things together? Because at this time now, this is amazing. It's a bunch of us from all different uh, parts of the uh, uh, globe on this one place right now, which is beautiful. How do we create this as a system and an institution? So that was my big question. Some of y'all answer those questions, but I just wonder, is there an overall uh, idea of uh, putting a council or some sort together, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'd, I'd like to give that question to Samad if you have a thing or two to add, but I will say this, I think it becomes very crucial, especially in a time of anything is absolutely possible, in a time of extreme potential, um, it becomes very important and very key that these conversations go from planning and a lot of words going back and forth to entirely executing something like making it tangible. Monde touched on this um, um, and Nemo touched on this. Intention becomes very important and the intent. And I always say this to my fellow actors, it becomes crucial that you invest in yourself as an artist. A Trevor Noah is not a Trevor Noah because he, he made money in South Africa and set, um, you know, in South Africa, spending his money locally. He took the bit that he had and he traveled to every single comedy festival around the world. He was a regular feature as if he lived in those festivals. And that was him investing in himself. So he put himself physically in the rooms that would allow him to be seen, heard, shake a hand, and ultimately be known to be someone so he could be tested to be on a bigger stage. So I agree. Um, Samad, if you can unmute yourself, I'm going to ask you to, to, um, to, to break some knowledge, to break some, you know, to give us some insight there. Yes, 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 yes. No problem. Thank you for the question. Um, I don't believe we need to wait for any organization to do anything for us. I think this is this platform is 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 living proof of us just reaching out, applying our brains, applying our relationships, and starting to have that dialogue. The minute we start doing that, then we 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 set a new precedent, right? So now it's more normal. It's it's, it's a norm for us to reach out in different parts of the world and, and and try to see how best to put something together. You know, and I think the main thing I would speak to, I would, I would like to say to anyone who's an independent content creator, you have to think about the business of this, right? When you think of creativity, how do you monetize it should be part of that. Unless you just want to be do it for a charity or just do it because it's a passion. There's nothing wrong with that. But as grown people, we have to feed our families. We have to provide, right? So... You don't have, I don't have the luxury of just creating just because. It has to make good business sense, right? So in order to make good business sense, I have to think about the different markets in the world. If I'm going to create a piece of content, where can I monetize it? How can I monetize it globally? Understanding the different markets, North America, what's North America? U.S., Canada, Caribbean, right? That's a territory. Understanding the U.K. market, European market, Africa. If you have to break down Africa, then it's country by country um, as it relates to licensing a finished product. Um, so I don't believe we should sit around and wait for anybody to do anything for us or any organization to be formed. I think we all individually have the power to manifest greatness, to figure out how do we connect these dots. 
prime example. A few weeks ago, me and Winston, we were talking about how do we do something? What should we do? And then we applied our minds and looked at who's, who's our relationships. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, Mike, Michael J. White sitting right there. You know, it's a relationship. That's a good friend of mine. So I'm going to look at my relationship to say, hey, Mike, would you be interested in coming on board? Winston's going to reach out to one of her relationships. Are you going to be interested in coming on board? Yeah. Right? And then we look at people who love and support us behind the scenes. And, 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 and next thing you know, here we are. Um, Monday, I mean, me and Monday has been in negotiations and rooms figuring things out many times, right? But if I got something good, hey, Monday, what do you think? Because it's the same mission for BET. BET is building this platform and trying to be, uh, 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 create a, a platform for, for, for Africa, right? So that is, I'm not waiting for an organization who we can go to to say, hey, can you help us do this? No, the power is within us. The powers in our relationships, which is the greatest asset you can have, is your relationships, managing your relationships. You know, I say you plant the seed, you water the plant, and you cultivate it at some point, but then you keep planting. And, and that's what this is here. In some form or fashion, I've worked with every, a bit of everybody, but I can't do this by myself. Winston can't do it by himself. It's, it's a lot of people behind the scenes who believe in a vision. If it makes sense and the passion is behind it, people will support you. Yeah. You know? So, and so uh, I just don't, I, my, my point is, I don't think we should ever have to wait for some organization somewhere to do something for us. And um, can I clarify too? I, I wasn't really speaking on waiting as much as saying, moving forward from this second right now like i said we're all on the line right now we're all smart mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. i've been in the industry 30 years i work with winsome um that's how i got in the industry pretty much so I'm, I'm just wondering from this point moving forward what uh um what kind of resources can we get to to that that does the daily work of bringing us together you, you understand right. what i'm saying not as much as just um you know, we all individually link up and we do something, put something together. But I mean, if we had a, a system that was daily working towards putting us together, making things happen, stuff like that, what would that look like for us in the African diaspora of filmmaking? You understand what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I've been watching Nollywood movies for, for over a decade, you know, and I'm from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? But I used to get the DVDs from the uh the, the street guys you know what i mean and beyonce versus Rihanna and all that stuff that that's what got me into nollywood and us even to this day now that netflix has opened up and have more films you see the growth and, and everything i'm just wondering um uh yeah. what do we have that's just on a daily basis kind of helping push yeah. this agenda now i hear that i hear that mr theron and i think that's a very good question to ask but also um in the beautiful <laughs> Uh, Can I say something? So, so, yes. you got to, go ahead, Jocelyn. Go ahead. But um, I, I see I, I see where you're coming from with what you're saying. But I think that also, I don't know what what I mind is also a question in relation to what you just said. But um, for instance, Kim said that before you can even break into Hollywood, you need to learn the American accent. Now, a story is a story. We all can't speak American. So there's a lot of Africans out here who are very talented who could probably be in a production in America. But then because of their accent one of the reasons one of the criteria is if, if it's not met you're not actually going to get the role or maybe you might not even make make the cut so now i like the idea of how do we come together and what are we doing how are we bridging the gap between the american actor and even the british african actor or the british or the black african actor because whether you like it or not a lot of americans we we, we feel they feel that it's america and then the rest of the world but then at the end of the day is for instance, black people together around the world, same people. So how do we now come together? Let the past advise the narrative into the future. Yes, I'm not going to deny the fact that there was slave trade, it happened and it affected a lot of people, but then I've learned it in school, but how do I now use that as a tool to now thrive positively ahead? Because everybody wants to be progressive. So again, how do we now bridge the gap between that black African 
who lives in Ghana or Nigeria or in the UK. Because, for instance, when Cynthia Arrivo was casted for, for Tubman, you know, everybody was, there was a lot of controversy around it because they feel like, well, she's not American enough. She doesn't understand what we went yeah. through and all that. So that's the problem. How do we now bridge that gap, you know, and then work collectively? I think like Theron is asking to, to you know, to come together as one unit to shoot an interesting story. It could be an African story, it could be an American story, but how do we now, you know, combine forces because we are stronger how, how, do, how do we turn it into a regular exactly. thing now? Yeah. Exactly, because we're yeah. stronger together. And the, the common enemy is not an American, a black American or a black African. The common enemy is out there. So how do we come together uh, as a unit to now address the issues that we're facing from the common enemy? You know, and that's, I think for me, that is something that we need to use this platform for because I don't want to be, I don't want to feel like a black African when I go to Hollywood. Or yeah, I don't want to feel Hollywood like an artist. Like a black, you know, black American because you're home, you know. So how do we come together as, as a unit? Because we're stronger together. And that, for me, that is what bothers me. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this particular question. Hello. That is the question. Um, Hello. So Winsome, yes. Yeah, let me jump in. I think I, I, I hear what Theron is asking, and Jocelyn, you put it perfectly. We are stronger together. And I think what Samad did, especially when we came together and did this, is exactly what he said. And I think that's sort of the blueprint on the template for moving forward. Get your resources together, you know, because that's your strongest asset. And we start, like, so we put this together. We started talking about this less than three weeks ago. But yeah. we were in action every day. It yeah. is not just a notion. I think we are the quintessential example of you can get it done when, you're, when the yeah. passion and the intent is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three weeks later, we are here starting a conversation. I hope this is the beginning of a conversation that never ends. It's yeah. a conversation that's been long overdue. Yeah. And here we are now sitting, talking with people globally around the world. When I started Blueprint, I was just trying to reach Harlem. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm here having a conversation with, this is, it is humbling to me, extremely humbling. And Tapello, I think you put it perfectly. And I think um, Stephen, who was one of our team, the ancestors are behind us now. It is time to move forward knowing that we're supported. It's this is our time. It's not, if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? Absolutely. 100%, 100%. And, and I'll just add two things. There's a lot of people out there with ideas. It's all about execution. And that's Absolutely. what Winston just said. I mean, that's what separates everybody. It's the ability to actually execute. You know, how many people yes. have you, you, you talked to that have an idea? You see them two years later, they're still talking about the idea. Three years later, you know, you have to execute. Just look through your Rolodex and see what resources, what relationships you have and move forward. The next thing I will also say is, as sim I, I've been on sets where when it's lunchtime, everybody goes to their corner, right? People group up. And even in Africa, I've been on sets where people group up. So the problem is we don't break bread together. And, we, you know, and, and, and where I come from, breaking bread can be, can be money or just as simple as actually sharing a meal. But when you break bread with people, and, and that from yeah. an African American, I say, well, let me sit down with this person from Uganda or this person from wherever, and actually have a meal and talk. And then you'll start to see, hey, we have a lot of things in common. And then that might start to inform your creative spirit, right? Because now you say, wait, I can, I can cast this person. I can, why yeah. is, uh, I think Yina said it earlier, right? Well, why can't this lawyer be Nigerian, even though we're shooting this movie in New York. You, you know, so the minute you start to break bread and have dialogue with people from different cultures, yep. it becomes easier because all we know is what we were, what we were shown in America. I'll tell you from as a black American, African American, all we've seen growing up was um, donate to Africa. Um, there's some kind of warlord. There's babies with flies on their face. There's HIV, there's a coup. All of the negative things you can imagine, or a safari or Tarzan. Imagine growing up, that's all we know, yeah. right? And then you, you, you have this relationship with Africa, you, you really don't know, it's like the Africans. Yeah. Then you get to a point, you travel to Africa, and then the people in Africa knows every, 
every TV show, every movie, they know every actor, actors who we might classify as a C actor or somebody who's a has-been, might be someone that they really like and inspire, or, or admire someplace in Africa because they grew up watching American content. So we don't understand each other. And then, you know, some people told, somebody told me before, do Americans cook? I said, what do you mean do we cook? Yeah, we cook. <laughs> but we, well, all your movies is you're always ordering Chinese food or pizza. Only time you guys eat is to eat together or cook is Thanksgiving or Christmas. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard there's that. There's always takeout. There's always takeout. Yeah. But the point is, everybody has the wrong impression of everybody. We, we're confused. And until we start to break bread, I don't care if it's have a coffee together, have a drink together, go to a comedy show together, pick up the phone and talk. Until you do that, we're gonna always be in corners. And we can't wait and figure this out the moment there's a budget to produce something and say, hey, let me just cast this person. Because that's why when we write these stories, a lot of times there's a disconnect because you're just putting your own opinion on what you think someone else's culture is. So that's yes. what I would say. It's simple as breaking bread. And that's why I've been traveling around Africa and Europe and I, I try to build my relationships organically and genuinely. And I share meals and talk. Jocelyn, I mean, you just mentioned Sparrow. I remember I met you years ago and you was, you still working with that same uh, 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 Sh Shirley from Pong. Yep. To this day, that means you guys have a great relationship a decade later. And that's what it's about. So relationships, let's break bread, let's understand each other, let's share meals with people from different cultures. And, 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 and that would inform your creativity and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. 100% yeah. taking notes. And, you know, it's actually everything you're mentioning is everything you as an individual or human being naturally have. You know, we naturally have the power to, to say, hello, how are you? What are you up to? To ask the questions, we naturally have the ability to, to inspire each other, educate each other. We can. You, can. you can use or build your relationship as and, you know, without having to spend money. You know, I like may I, that. May I add something I'm, to this? Yeah, 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 of course. Yes, uh, because I know, you know, this question, we've been dealing with this question. But I think Theron's question is, is quite the, the essence of why we're here. Exactly. And yeah. I think I'd be remiss if we leave this conversation without, some, without a plan <laughs> coming from it. Um, see, I, and one thing I would encourage is that even in the inception of our art, if we can think about these things, think about how to create these win-win situations with each other. Okay, the reason I have a, a, a global career is because I'm significant in Russia, um, Germany. I, my, what I'm doing is something that sells and creates win-win situations all around the world. And now with that, because of action um, being sold all around the world, there's a reason why the only Chinese guy we know is Jet Li or Jackie Chan and things like that, because there's, okay, what do, what do, do we get from each, the, the cultures and stuff, okay? So the thing is, if, if in the inception, I think of um, how, because I want, I want us to be global. This is why I'm here. This is why I've been shoulder to shoulder with Samad. Um, how, how do I uh, help Jocelyn? By, by I'm, I'm, I'm concocting a, a movie that I'm trying to sell everywhere. How do I sell to her, her territory? How do I make it a win-win situation for her? How do I make it a win-win situation for this person who is significant in this part of the, the world? When we put those things together, uh, these win-win situations, they just pretty much take care of themselves because uh, we're not just only myopic in our, in our view. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm you know, here. And I say, um, I love his question because, uh, hey, I mean, I feel like this is, we are answering that question by being here. This is how, yeah. this is how we get yeah. that done. 
Um, but, you know, it, it breaks my heart to see power in a room and the discussion go in a circle. I'm not saying that that's what's happened, but this has happened often. That discussions can go in and we, uh, we agree with rhetoric that's, that's uh, occurred before us and will occur after us. But if we said, let's eat at Joe's, at least Joe's revenues would go up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come, so but, so all, all I'm asking personally, yeah. I would love a plan. And, and when I say, I'm raising my hand to say, call on me, any of you. If I can help, I will. All right, so that's, what, that's the nature of what this is. So um, I hope as we continue to speak, you are concocting that question, and so we can go. Ah, I got you know. I want to. I want to inbox uh, this person because I have you know. We we may be able to help each other, and yeah. there's, there's no greater feeling uh, that can change everything than if we did something, mm-hmm. and we 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 progressed with something that was our unified effort. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, we don't have to speak about it because we did it, mm-hmm. you, know? Mm-hmm. I, you know? And I don't mind if it starts here because it yeah. tends to grow. So yeah. if I can, you know, because Samad knows, if I can do something that helps and I, and I flew there to you know, get fed and, and back, but I know this is a seed that's going to help. You'd be surprised at what you'd hear from me, because yeah. this is about this is bigger than all of us. If to tell the world that we can, we don't have to ask for what we want. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't, for us not to ask for what we want is priceless. Yeah, we just got to get up and do it. Yeah, just- so I just say, hey, let's continue the discussion, but please, let's follow up. Absolutely. With, a, with a tangible ask, you know, you know, a, a tangible ask yeah. that we can, you know, yeah. put our efforts <laughs> into action. And I must say, to add to that, the answer should come from us as individuals before we expect the answer to come from us as collectives. We all have the answer. We all already have an idea of what it is we want to achieve as an end goal. So to work it backwards is a beautiful exercise because you start seeing what you need to be doing or who you need to be talking to, to get to where you need to get. And we live in a beautiful time where, you know, um, I can possibly reach a Michael Jai White if I really put my efforts to it and talk to him in under two, three days. I couldn't do the same 10 years ago. So we have, you know, portals the channels are there the digital era is beautifully um linking us we just got to know who we are in every room that we're in or every webinar that we're in thank you so much uh, mr i just i just want to close out my question real quick um okay one i'm going to give you one more i'm going to give you one more i I need to i need to um um, move on to one important panelist before she goes no go ahead go ahead just plant the seed did you plant the seed I wanted to put an end on it is just that, you know, I, I've, I've worked in Viacom for almost 20 years. I used to produce Rap City. I used to produce Sucker Free, um, um, even brought you on TV Raps 2011. But I've constantly been in a situation where I want to take my talents and bring it to Ghana or bring it to Nigeria, but I have no outlet to do that. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, well, no. also, like you said, speaking to somebody and breaking bread and meeting people in the room. But like for me, they're just out of the blue. I want to use my talents culturally to help yeah. the overall culture. You get what I'm saying? And I don't have any specific place that I can go to and say, I'm going to bring my talents here for the bigger goal, not financial, not this and that, but just, yeah. you know, besides the financial and the industry element of our, uh, um, you know, film, cinema, boom, boom, we are also cultures. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? And, and um, I think we cherish melding cultures more than just cherish uh, melding industries. You get what I'm saying? And my objective would be to how do I bring my 30 years of talent, skill set, and everything to anybody 
yeah. in, in the diaspora to help them to build the culture. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think you just started, the first step is already done, man. We're sitting in this global webinar. Every, what you've just mentioned now about bringing your 30 years experience and completely plugging it into Africa one way or another, mm -hmm. it's already done. You're already in the right room. So the beauty of being able to say hello and have a conversation has already set it off, you know, and, 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 and this webinar, just hearing that and being from Africa and in Africa right now, mm. is as good as well, that. Hi. You know, I'm just saying hi. hi. Hey, <laughs> hey guys, I, Tap, I know you're moving forward, but I would not feel right if I didn't add to put, put it all together because I just listened to you all and you guys, that was so great. Um, yeah. But I think what everybody just said is basically like, it's like we need, because, you know, individually we can connect together and we could pull our connections. But what the, you know, ultimately what the Ron is saying is who leads the charge forward to form this alliance? Because we do need one and it should exist. That, that is what the Academy is. And it's like, now that it's 2020, how do we create Facebook, the Academy African diaspora version of Facebook for us so that, you know, we can, we can connect with each other. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to struggle to connect with you guys. We shouldn't have to struggle with everyone individually linking and, and all of that. That is, that is, we're doing that because that is our struggle. However, those that are in the academy don't have to do that. Every year in November, December, they get mailers, they get screeners. How do we send screeners to each other of our work? And it would be easier to do those things if we had our own organization, alliance, whatever it is, it does not exist for us and where we're gonna struggle until we get that. So mm -hmm. I don't know where this, this convers. I know we're gonna continue this conversation forward, but wherever that conversation moves forward, it should be forming whatever this is because it starts with us. Mm -hmm. That's it, bye y'all. <laughs> power to that, power to that. I just want a little, a little bit more on what Jakari said. Um, like Jocelyn said, we are stronger together. And the whole impetus for this conversation, for Blueprint as a whole, is our people perish for lack of knowledge. This is yeah. what we need. We, there was so much wisdom dropped here. People are already asking, when is the replay going to be? Because I've missed yeah, something. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we, this was so informative and powerful. I don't want anybody who gave us any bit of their time today to feel like they were not appreciated and we didn't get it. It was larger than even what we said. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You know, like you said, um, when some three weeks ago, when we were talking about getting this thing off the ground and getting it done, you know, you, we knew for a fact that these people who have agreed to lend us their time and their value and their insights don't have that kind of time. But the fact that they've given us even a minute, my God, is priceless. And, and, and I have to agree with you. It is, it is really great. Um, I want to speak to Connie, Queen Ferguson. Is she, is she back? She, or? She's almost on. She's almost on. Just she's almost on? Class. Maybe save her. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm, I'm going to keep it moving then. Um, I've got a question for Connie, but I know I've got a lady from Botswana and Connie is from Botswana. You know, I wanted to get, oh, is it, you know, it's, it's a sir, Mr. Sam Gwenya. Mm -hmm. Sam Gwenya from Botswana. He had a, he had a question for Shauna, who's not, who's, 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 who's done, and for Connie. So I'm going to, I'm going to park you, sir, um, with Connie, but I'm going to open up the channel to Samad. And if you want to ask Samad a question, I see you've got a note here. You want to ask Samad something. Go ahead. Over to you. If you're with us, Ms. Tenguenya, you can fire away. Samad is all yours. Are you with us? You yeah, just I have mean, to unmute, unmute yourself and you're good to go. Yeah, just unmute and you golden. There we go. Um, bottom. You're still, you're still muted, Sam. You're still bottom muted. right, Sam. Just um, go um, bottom left. Sorry. Um, your mute button. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you. I'm, I'm on now. Yes. Welcome. Yeah. Um, well, my, my question was very simple. It's a, it's a one liner. Um, Love one what I wanted to ask from uh, Samad, as the guys from Hollywood, is to um, tell us, I think it's actually been answered a little bit, um, to just tell us um, how do you keep the authentic uh, African story, especially that um, 
Africa is diverse. And I had people thinking that Africa is a country, which is not. So it's very diverse from, uh, from the south to the north. You're talking of very, very diverse people. So how do we encapsulate uh, that? The, uh, the um, uniqueness of Africa and uh, keep getting Africa to be represented the way it is. Right. Um, so two things I would say, you know, in, in this, as we market this, we said um, Afri uh, Hollywood is not a destination. It's a mood, it's a feeling, it's a level of execution, right? Yeah. So for me, I don't look at Hollywood as, you know, going to California. Um, it's really wherever you are able to produce and create and execute, right? And then from, a, from a story to, I think tribalism, tribalism, just, let me just say this. We're all talking about how do we do this and how do we do that? You know, the one thing that gets in our way collectively as a people is tribalism. And what I mean mm -hmm. by tribalism, not just a country or a place in Africa or just, uh, different tribes in Africa, I'm saying tribalism, period. African Americans, we have this whole tribalism thing. And then if we if you want to go deeper into that, we start breaking down into cliques. I'm from New York. I'm from LA. I'm from Miami. And we it's always tribalism. You go to Africa, you know, Nigeria is Nigeria. Then they have the tribalism things happening within that. You go to South Africa, tribalism, okay. right? Everybody oh, yeah. is creating for everybody's in their own corner. So the minute I think how do you overcome that? I mentioned breaking bread earlier, and then I'm going to mention the right partnerships, the right strategic partnerships. I can't oh, yeah. do something in Botswana unless I'm speaking with, I have a, a partner who knows their thing in Botswana. And yes. we can marry what you know in Botswana with what I know from a global stage. And how do we make that story uh, commercially viable? Yeah, That's what we have to look at. Because I'm in a room with the Mondays of the world, and I know how they think. And, and they're going to look at, Mondé said it earlier. He said he's a, you know, he has to look at the business first, right, Mondé? You have to look at the mm -hmm. business to see how does it make business sense. So if, I'm not going to lead you astray and say, okay, I love this story you came up with. It's about uh, something that happened in a village in Botswana, and you had to live it, you had to grow up in Botswana to appreciate the story. Then I'm going to tell yeah. you, how do I monetize that? Versus let's sit down and figure out how do we still respect that story that you're telling? I think Michael Lucker said it best. You know, a good story translates anywhere. And I do know people will watch anything if your story is developed properly, your characters is developed properly. You know, it, it has, you know, I, the movie doesn't start off the way, it, it doesn't end the way it started. So there's something people will watch any kind of content if it's meaningful. And when I say meaningful, I don't care if it's about a drug lord or whatever the case may be. People want to latch on the characters. They want to root for somebody. They want to hate, hate someone. They want to uh, empathize or sympathize. So as long as you know as a storyteller that you're, you're going to tick all these different boxes creatively, then you're going to make sure you tick the boxes from a business standpoint that you paid attention to how we're going to market this. Who can we get to get into? I was on this panel and Michael Ja White said he's accessible. You, as a creator, keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, Michael Ja White said he's accessible. He's, in, he's interested in, in, in doing some compelling stuff. Malik Yoba said the same thing. Anika said the same thing. So if you can look at how you marry talent from whether it's Botswana, South Africa, anywhere in Africa, it, it, it mix and match, mix with somebody from the UK or the US to try to tick the box so that your product, your end product is commercially viable. That is what we have to think about. Let's get rid of the tribalism one. Let's create stories and find the right strategic partners that can keep things authentic, but still allow uh, the end product to be commercially viable. Thank right? you, yeah. And That's that makes what I would sense. say. That, that, and yeah, let's yeah. tick those boxes. And let's tap into the relationships that we've uh, cultivated to get it done. Yeah. That's the recipe.
Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Mr. Mguenya. Appreciate that, Thank you sir. very Thank much, you. Mr. Thank Mguenya. You. Thank you. Thank you, my sir. Um, I'm going to, you know, I want to ask Connie a question or two if she is back. If you're there, Connie, just give us a hello. If you're not back, I'm going to move on to my BET winners. But, um, yeah, I think as we get closer to you know, the end of the third session. She's, she's joining now. Is she jo joining yeah. now? That's great. I just, you know, I just realized that there is so much that there is to know. And what's happening here on this webinar is a lot of seeds are being planted. A lot of questions are being answered and a lot of direction is being given. It's on us to then pick that up and go define what that means for our individual journeys. And I think for any um, artist, or, or, or filmmaker, or storyteller that's watching this webinar, um, it's important to understand that ultimately you will always get drops of knowledge from different places. You go online to Google, you go on YouTube, you, you watch different clips from different people. It's what you do with what you get that determines what the next step is or what the journey is for you as a filmmaker. And I'm learning that from my own experiences and and, and sometimes you really just got to feed the monster, empower your own art so that you can do things the way you do things and offer what's you, what your unique offering is um, at, at, at all times. I've got a question from Kakiso Mulema. I see Kakiso, you're still with us. I'm going to try to give you your one question, my brother, because you've been here for a long time and you want to speak to Connie. So, you know, she's, she's coming on. And Murungwa Ntoke will be our last BET winner, um, competition winner that will speak to Connie Ferguson. And I think for me at this point, um, with the last three um, questions, you know, I'd like for us to maybe encapsulate all of all, um, the entire discussion today. So within your answers, my panelists, just give us a wrap up of, you know, your sentiment, um, given what we've done here today. What is the ultimate take out um, from each of, each of my final panelists? Maybe we can start there until Connie comes on. So from, let's start with, let's start with, say, for example, who can we start with? It's Michael Jai White. Your closing sentiment, my sir, and your, what you're leaving us with and what you're taking out from this entire experience. It would just be a reiteration um, and an encouragement is basically what I think we've all said. Uh, what, what Samad just said to me is what I said, which was, you know, you're creating a win-win situation. Uh, how do you win with my involvement? How do I win with your involvement? Sometimes as, as, as artists, we are so focused on what we want, and we're not thinking about what the other side gains in that transaction. Uh, and, you know, uh, so that's what it is. You got to just say, okay, the, and you can explain, if you know how that person wins, well, you can encourage them, you can persuade them to do business with you much easier, you know? Um, so yeah. I, would, I would, you know, like I say, I would encourage uh, more of that. Um, uh, the fact that I believe this is the, the beginning, this could very well be the beginning um, to those questions, to, uh, the question that Jan um, asked, and uh, then maybe this leads to a, yeah. an, an organization. Uh, I know, you know, I'm here by way of Samad, and I want to thank Samad tremendously. Samad's yeah. a friend of mine, and you know, I'll do whatever he says. Thank you, know, you. He, thank you. Involved, I appreciate you. Got me and beside him. I don't even have to think anymore. So that's what. That's how the, that relationship works. So, I mean, you know, I, I just look forward to um, you know, just progress. And, you know, hopefully we look back and say, hey, man, it started here. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. White. Um, you know, I'm an actor and you are a true inspiration on so many levels, um, you know, um, and just keep doing what you're doing, keep teaching us the way and, 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 and how to master ourselves through discipline. That's key. That's major. Thank you so much. So um, Monday, sir, um, 
if there's anything that you have to impart as a, a, a some form of closing for us, um, you've seen what we're trying to put together here or what we've put together here, not tried, we did it. Um, um, and, you know, what more do you want to see going forward? In fact, how should, how do you think creators of content should from this moment on um, be engaging with you as a broadcaster besides knocking at your door what is it that you want to see when somebody walks through your door at BET? Listen, uh, I think it's this has been an amazing opportunity um, I mean I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a personal level I'm inspired just by the, the knowledge sharing and, and openness from everyone um, and these are diverse views from people who are coming from diverse areas of, of, of the same industry we all operate in. From, from, yeah. from, 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 from my perspective, guys, I, I, um, you know, I, I want to encourage everyone, let this not be lost to a, uh, a, a connected space uh, alone. I think we need to put a lot more um, action and implementation to this forum. Um, um, sometimes, yes, it does require us maybe to structure it a lot more. Um, but I think, you know, once again, Samad has done an amazing job with the team to pull us all together. Um, I'm a great believer in networks um, and, 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 and building on networks, building on projects. Uh, and also, I think, I think it's also, I think what I'm seeing is a lot of passion and, and, and real clear, meaningful intent to get us to move forward, um, uh, one, as Africans, uh, two, as also making sure that we are, you know, we are closing that gap between African-Americans and Africans. We are closing that gap in terms of just what's good storytelling. You know, if you're brown, it, should, it, 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 it cooks. Everyone wants, let me tell you guys, BT is in uh, Korea. We've got, we just launched BT Korea uh, a year ago. Um, we, you know, we've got BT in France, we've got BT in, uh, in the UK, uh, we've got BT in Africa. We've just launched a, 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 a BT show in, 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 in Nigeria, in Lagos. We've got a few, obviously, here. Uh, we, BT is about to launch a, a long-running uh, daily uh, drama. Um, now, yeah. in, we're launching now in, uh, in July. There's a lot happening in our space. Uh, we want to be in Ghana, honestly. Uh, we, we, BT wants to be in Ghana. I'm talking to some some of our, our, our partners in Ghana to see what we can do. Um, you know, we we we're talking like I said, we'll be uh, you know from uh, from my MTV portfolio in in uh, in Uganda in the, in the east and in, in, in guys, it's Africa Day on the 25th. Okay, I'm I'm actually inviting. Oh, yeah. Let's have a, it's Africa Day on the 25th. I'm inviting all of you. I'll, 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 I'll uh, through you, Samad, I'll, I'll send you, and in, we're doing an initiative, a COVID initiative, which, uh, which you know, and, and we're reaching out to everyone. We've got Idris uh, Elba, uh, who, who, who'll be hosting this initiative. And I'm going to invite this whole group because I think it takes, it takes knowing who's doing what. Yeah. And the projects we're all doing to see how best we can either fit, collaborate, partner. That's how it's gonna work, guys. And I think that's, that's kind of the approach is, how do we collaborate? How do we partner? Um, how, but it, it's gonna take us sharing uh, yeah. ideas, you know, and understanding, you know, what, what Michael's latest project is, what's Tapelo's latest project. Samad, Samad and I, we talk all the time. Some stuff we see, hey, this can work, maybe this can't work, you know? Um, let's talk about models. How do we license? You know, what works in, you know, lic licensing models work differently. What, you know, what works for free to air, for pay TV, for Netflix. Netflix, Netflix is exciting at the moment. They're in the territory, doing some stuff, but they've got a different business model, you know. But it's, it's about also sharing the various business models that, that, that um, and the value chain and everyone understanding the value chain in terms of the continent but also content that travels. You know, we, we've just uh, did a, a sitcom called Black Tax. Um, yeah. and, 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 and that sitcom is shot in English. We're now about to do a French version of it, you know, because we've got, we've got French interests now from other territories. Canal Plus wants to, wants to license it, et cetera. So it's understanding 
value chain, but it's going to take us slightly stepping up from this level in terms of just how do you then formally connect mm -hmm. in a way we either share ideas um, in terms of, uh, you know, if you go to like publications like Screen Africa or all these industry, it's yeah. difficult to, 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 to you know, because all, all those things are happening post. We yeah. need the ideation space in the modeling space. That's, what we, that's where we need to connect. Um, you know, BT Africa is open for business. Uh, I, 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 you know, through Samad, let's, let's, let's find a way of sharing contact details, uh, exchanging, exchanging information, creating yeah. a, a little bit more structure to just take us to the next level where this becomes a lot more fluid. Just in my black book, I can pull up another 40, 40, 40, 30, 40 other people that can mm -hmm. add this process um, and, yeah. ele and elevate really the narrative about how do we, and from an African-American perspective, you know, just talking to my BT colleagues, there's such a huge um, um, hunger for, 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 for the continent, stories coming from the continent. Wow. Af Americans wanting to connect with the continent and vice versa. We also want to connect. It's, it's funny, we all, <laughs> yeah. but we're not engaging. Uh, yeah. I, I just want to thank, um, you know, it's, it's quite a humbling uh, uh, opportunity to be part of this. Let, let it not die off. Let it not go to waste. Um, the commitment, uh, I think, you know, like Michael just put it out there to say he's available. Honestly, yeah. I think myself, I'm available. I always put up yeah. my hand and say, hey, guys, Let's connect. Let's make this a much more meaningful, deeper exercise because, you know, ultimately that's the bridge. You know, we we doing what we're doing from a, from a network and biocompatibility yep. perspective in Africa to connect. Um, let's create formats. You know, we you know one of the vision we have is to create African formats that can travel um, uh, globally. So so yeah. once again, let's 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 do it. Let's not talk you know because I, I know we also great speakers and talk well your award-winning speakers don't you know let's put <laughs> let's put action to this great great uh, great yeah. start point exactly. absolutely absolutely Monte. thank you so much so that is 100 percent on the nail um let's do that and maybe let's begin by dropping all of our social media handles the easy stuff right you know, just your, your digital platforms, post on the chat, just go on that chat icon and just put up your, your social handles so we at least know how to follow your journey um, and stay inspired and maybe, you know, start sharing messages at some point. But yes, how do we then move on from planting seeds? We've got to water the garden. That's what yes, needs to happen. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Connie's on. That's, yep. Connie's on. Yep, that's what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Samad, you got something? Yeah. Connie's back? Connie's gone. Connie's here. Okay, yeah. cool. So I definitely want to have one or two words with Connie. Um, I would like to speak to Jocelyn, um, our lady Dumas, um, um, give us a bit of a closing before we wrap up, as well as Winsome is also going to give us a closing sentiment, as well as a quick closing sentiment from Samad. Connie, welcome. Hello, hey everyone. Hey! Hello! We got oh, you. Lee, Lee, Lee. Hey. <laughs> I'm there for a bit, but I'm back. I'm here. Look, it is understandable to whom much is given, right? Much is expected. <laughs> so I, you know, it never stops, and I do understand you got a lot on your plate. You run this, you run that um you know it, it it comes it comes with the territory the territory so welcome connie nice to Thank see you, you. Uh, talk to you yeah you know um we've done you know so much together you were right there when i began my acting career um you know you've you've stayed consistent you've stayed um relevant um for so long and it's real it's not because of something unreal, it's because of the work that you were putting in. The yeah. question I have, which is the same space I'm in as an actor who also works with different brands and has his own businesses and his own brands and products, um, outside of myself as an acting brand, um, yeah. how do you navigate 
you know, the business side of things. You've got a cosmetics brand. Um, yeah. I've got a men's, I've got a men's grooming brand coming out. I've got a wine brand, but I've found a way to separate my person from my product. How do you yeah. successfully do that? Because when I look at your 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 cosmetic cosmetic products, I feel yeah. like they can they can sell on their own without you putting your face on the bottle, you know, which is a great yeah. thing because you created a product. How do you maintain that relationship between yourself as an artist and yourself as a businesswoman and separate it? Um, I actually don't separate a lot because at the end of the day, I am the brand. I am my USP. I am my unique selling um, point. Yeah. So I, how I carry myself as a brand is actually what sells my product. So everything that I do in front of the screen, everything that I do in my personal space has to be representative of the brand that I'm putting out there. Um, mm. So the, the, the cosmetics brand has done very well. I hear you when you say it can actually sell without my face on it, and which is absolutely true right now. But yeah. because of what I've been doing for the past... 30 years now, people associate with that face so much that when no. that face is not there, it's almost like, no, it's not going to be. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. um, I know a lot of people who actually finish the, the, the body lotion and then they will keep the bottle for the sake of keeping the yes, bottle. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 that unique selling point is very important. But obviously for the men's range, we don't use the face. Um, it, it's just a branded bottle and the product still does well in any case, just with the name. Wow. Wow. And, and, and does that, I mean, are you having, is it a normal experience for you to navigate both it's your productions, going to die on me. your productions, your, 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 your yeah. own acting roles and, 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 and then your businesses, does it not, does it not affect the way you are as a producer, the way you, 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 con you know, your business runs or have you set up systems that empower both your production companies so everything keeps running, whether or not Connie's there? Um, you know, um, have, how have you set that up or, 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 or what's your approach to keeping sane through all of that? They are two completely different businesses, right? I have Connie Multinational Brands, which is the one that, that handles the, the beauty products and um, the merchandising side of the business. And then we have Ferguson Films, which I run with my husband, Shona. And this is what focuses on um, creating contact, uh, um, content, um, making yeah. drama. So the two businesses are two completely separate entities. So I dedicate some time to Goni Multinational Brands, but mm -hmm. I run it with another partner who's actually quite savvy in marketing he, he's a marketer so he's also managed to help market the brand and put it out there um we are in stores so i do have help i could never claim to be able to do anything on my own i yeah. do believe that you know with every step that you take with every elevation that you make you do have someone that you lock you you walk alongside with i suppose which is why we have this platform as well is to yeah. say, you know that you can never walk, um, you can never travel a journey on your own, right? You always need to be traveling with someone. So yeah. I have um, a team of people who are traveling with me with the cosmetics brand. And then I have a whole production team with Ferguson Films who are working hand in glove with me to make this company, you know, the best that we can make it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely phenomenal. Like the way you make it seem so effortless, is, is, is really what we're trying to unlock and possibly help the next Connie Ferguson, you know, um, um, get the right chops so they can do their own thing. Cool. Yeah. We've got um, two questions from our BET competition winners, and they want to know from you, um, um, Sister Connie. Um, firstly, Morungwa um, Ntoke, is she, is she on? Do we have her with us, Samad? Is she with us? If you're there, Marungwa, just give us a hello so you can ask Connie. I see two questions from you. If she's not, we can move on. We've got Kakisho Muleme. 
Is Kahisho here? Yeah, Tapelo, Tapelo. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> How are you doing, brother? How are you I'm, doing? I'm so good what? and you and you and you Tabza. I'm I'm good, man. I love you know, you've just brought me back to South Africa, you know, like <laughs> that. that was definitely that was definitely like a, a a guy next door greeting. Okay, Smiley, Connie is all yours, she is all ears. Shoot. Hello, can you show? How are you, Mekoni? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. Can I report to you one for an amamzo? Yes. Yeah. How do you choose your actors or your actress for your productions? Do they yeah. have to? Do they have to be people that went to drama school, or do you or, or do you also take people with natural talent with formal education? Yeah. Yes, Thank that's you. my question. Um, okay, I'll start by how we actually select our actors that we use on any of our shows. Sure. We send out a brief to different agents, right? And then the agents would, will select from their um, actors who they feel will be most suited to the roles that we are auditioning for. And then they'll send those actors to us who we then audition and shortlist. Once we've shortlisted the ones that we feel um, could be suitable for the role, we then call them back. And then we put them on the actual set with our existing actors to perform an actual recorded scene, like they, they, they're recording for, for broadcast, right? And then based on that, we see how they fit in, 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 the, in the environment, um, if they have chemistry with the actors that they're working with, and that helps our selection process. Yeah. So you haven't yeah. made history like to pick one of your followers on Twitter or a come and act at, at the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm here. I see where this is going. <laughs> no, Tapelo, Tapelo, yeah, Tapelo. Yes. <laughs> Actually, Mama Kony can tell the truth. Now I'm always tweeting her that I want to act on the Queen, man. She knows. There's absolutely nothing wrong with reaching out, but obviously we do prefer to work through agents um, yeah. because it is a system to be followed and we, we love to follow that system. But if you believe that you are talented and you'd like to prove yourself and you'd like to prove yourself to us and maybe sure. you have a tape or a self-tape that you've made, you're absolutely welcome to send was um, we willing to have a look at it. We can audition you. And if we feel that there's great potential there that we can work with, then you, we can put you with um, our existing actors and to see how you work on an actual set in front of multiple cameras with the lights and everything. Do you not get flustered? And then we take it from there. But you know, um, your other question was, do we only audition people who went to school or do we also look at natural talent? Yes. I, I, I always obviously encourage going to school, but there mm -hmm. are those people that are just naturally talented where it's so in like they were born with it. Those people are trainable. Like you can recognize talent in someone. You look at someone, uh, even, even if they do like a, a, a self-recording and you go, oh, this person has that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Or they have that it thing. You know when someone has something that you can work with and we yeah. love them. Because what we usually bring out of them is like they, they become like their next big thing. So yeah, no, we don't just um, consider people who have gone to school or who have degrees. Obviously that's great and that does work for them, but we also look at natural talent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, something please, uh, Mr. Tapelo. Ta taps. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I'd like to pose the same question around, uh, around the same thing from, uh, to, to, to Connie. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been able to follow you uh, in so many things. I participated in BT Top Actor Africa earlier on. And um, I've been trying to like just open up to the world because I don't want to limit myself to care. I've been wanting to work with South Africans. I've been wanting to work with Nigerians. 
Mm-hmm. But I, I, um, it seems I don't have my way around all that. Um, what would you advise me? Um, I, I think you need to increase your network of people. Okay, who do you hang around? Who does yeah. the person around yeah. know that could help open doors for you? Um, yeah. You need to find ways to put yourself out there. Social yeah. media is a right now, but um, because everybody is doing it, you kind mm-hmm. of need to identify what makes you special. And when you put something out there, make sure that the people that you want to see that thing, see it. Or yeah. if you don't have it, if you don't have the means to do that, then make sure you know someone who's able to make sure that someone <laughs> sees that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. It's, um, it's a very competitive industry. I'm, going, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, so when, when you come into it, you need to come, come into it with a mindset that this is what I want. I do appreciate that it may be difficult and some doors may be hard to open. Never give up. If you believe you have what it takes um, and you can bring something great to the table, never give up. That one door will open. And yeah. once that one door opens, seize that opportunity with both hands and run with it. Don't Thank take you. it for granted. Know that this is my opportunity is yeah. now or never or die. Because that yeah. will determine your next. And you know, you. Um, that, is, that is absolutely 100% correct. And to add to what Sister Connie is saying, um, Alex, yeah. it's, you know, you asked the question, what can you do with what you have? And what you have is more than enough, especially in the digital era. I've, here's what I've done to try and help yeah. and assist and empower someone like yourself. In my 37 years of age, um, mm-hmm. I've decided, you know, 19 years in this industry, I've learned a lot. I've been blessed enough to have a fruitful career that has exposed me internationally. And I thought, let me create a platform that can help you with the basics and the information that you need to be empowered. So if you go on YouTube, one of the collaborators Mm -hmm. partners to this event, to this webinar is The Artist Corner TV. The Artist Corner TV, where I'm taking actors and actresses through my journey and my experiences in the industry, from the beginning of the industry to the very top of the industry. So where does it begin? It begins with you booking your gig, right? It begins with you entering the industry. So if you go on Artist Corner TV now, the first Mm -hmm. episode is an introduction episode, but the next one that's coming next week is an episode about booking your first gig. I'm literally talking about the audition process. I'm literally talking about the psychology of the artist who leaves their bedroom, whether you're at your mother's house, your own apartment, but what you are taking to that transaction called the audition, which yeah. I find to be one of the most beautiful spaces to be in because an audition process is there to marry an artist and a concept through a team. And if there's a fit, then there's a fit. So for now, I'll tell you straight, check your digital personality and your digital presence and your digital person. So outside of your physical, there's a digital presence that you have. Take care of that. Build on that. How does your, your Instagram look? Does your Instagram communicate your potential offering? What is your Facebook look like? You know, is it just images of you partying and drinking with friends and, and <laughs> swearing at people left and right? Or are you building an extension of your physical? Because that can already tell people a lot about what you do. Go online, Google monologues perform the monologues, put them up on your platforms, create avenues where people don't have to come all the way to Kenya to know about you, or you don't have to come here physically. Create avenues for people to see your work through links, through, through um, packaging. You have to package yourself. And you, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. So, so take care of your well-being. Stay fit. As Connie will tell you, she's... She's a fitness enthusiast and, you know, it's so inspiring because I'm in the same, I'm, I'm a fitness enthusiast myself, but when you start 
using your body, you know, like Michael Jai White spoke, you know, um, to release the good feel energies like endorphins that make you creative and that make you the sharpest tool in the room, somebody's going to see you. Somebody's going to notice, you know, so, so, so don't take for granted the digital era and the digital space. So many people can find you online and, 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 and reckon with your talent way before you have to get on a plane to come to South Africa. Wow. All right. Yeah. I guess yes. so that's you. my little two cents. So take care of your digital yeah. presence. Blow us away online because you can control that and you own that translation. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to ask, um, thank you so much, Osconi, um, for those pearls. I'm going to ask for closing remarks and sentiments, especially from um, the one lady I haven't spoken to since we opened the last segment, Jocelyn Dumas. Um, if you could, you know, Jocelyn, I know you have so much on your plate and, and during COVID-19 time, you're really on the ground and we see that. With your art and with your, with your offering as an artist, what is the last thing you want to leave, um, you know, that, that bright young kid with so much potential in the corner of Africa where there's probably no signal and this much data where people have to go on their knees and pray for good connection? If, 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 if they connect and catch your word or two, what would that be? Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, it's uh, that creative little boy or girl in that corner uh, shouldn't give up. Uh, they should keep, like you said, practicing, keep working on themselves. You never know who's watching, who's going to give you the opportunity. Um, a lot of times we use social media for so many things apart from what we are really passionate about. So again, you know, record some monologues and put it on social media if you have to. Uh, let people like Econi or Michael Jai White or even Esparo Productions see you doing something spectacular. I mean, you need to stand out from everybody else. Again, the competition is really, really tight. So what makes you different and what makes you stand out from everybody else is your ability to, to you know, to own what talents you have and you might not even go to school for it but just keep practicing uh keep on believing and you never know again it's one global village you never know who's watching you never know who is going to you know send you a dm and say you know what i want to do something with you come and audition um even yeah. i'm still doing that and i know you're also doing it Pelo. so everybody we are, we are all supposed to uh you know uh take our craft not yeah. you know, take our craft seriously hone it and, and be the best we can be at every given time. Um, time is of the essence. So again, it, it's all about, you know, just keep working at it, keep believing, and yeah. just one day, one day, keep pushing. And before I even, even go away, I just want to say that there's been so many times, there's been so many talks about everything we've talked about, but nothing has happened. There's so many great ideas, but we walk away and we go back to our usual uh, daily routines. So I pray that everything that Michael said, everything that everybody on here has said uh, is going to be sort of put into, into action. You know, uh, we are all tired of the talk. When it comes to talk, we can all talk a very good talk, but let's, yeah. implement, let's you know, stay together. We can, we can go far together. Let's, let's connect. When I, when I reach out to any of you on there, please, you better respond. <laughs> Because if you don't, I'll call you out. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> let's engage. And again, we are stronger together. Let's do this. You know, I, I hope this is the first of many to come. And it will not just be talk, but it will be a lot of things uh, happening progressively. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, guys. I'm, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you so you. much. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you so much. Um, um, before I hand over to Samad and Winsom to just really wrap this up for us and, and maybe a quick word from Connie. And I see Atando still here. I'm going to ask you to say a quick word and just wrap up. And then um, quickly, Samad and Winsom, um, you, know, um, you know, I think we could go on forever and ever and ever. Um, I, I think we've, 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 we've got takeoff and we've, we've really put something on the ground that has potential to become bigger than us um, for more than just our generations, um, you know. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to my BET winners. Thank you to BET, our, 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 our voice and our media partner, Magical, 
much love and respect to the tech team that's worked on this. You know, um, you know, I don't want to name all of you. I won't, you know, we'll, we'll take a lot of time, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the hard work you put in. Sister Connie, last word from you. I know you're busy and I know you probably have said first thing in the morning, so let me not keep you. <laughs> I do. Um, I think first <laughs> First, I'd like to say, sure, to everybody that was on this platform today, thank you so much for your time. Um, I feel like this is long overdue. Samad, I don't know how you pulled this off. My brother, you're a genius. Thank you so much for bringing it all together. Um, conversations need to be had. I believe this is just the start. And for anybody who gets the opportunity to watch this, please get the next person to watch it and the next person to watch it. Because I believe there's so much that can and will be learned about what we do, not just here in South Africa, but in the yeah, rest yeah. of the country and in, uh, in, in the US. You know, we always say that we are a one people, but we don't always behave like we are one people. So hopefully this is the start of us showing that. And as Jocelyn says, um, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk as well. So I'm looking forward to things to come, forward to things to come. Absolutely, my lady. Thank you so much. Queen Connie, appreciate you so, so much, my lady. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Atando Akani, the prince of theatre. I need a word from you before we go, before we, 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 we wrap it up. Unmute. Unmute, unmute, champ. Mute, and mute, and mute, and mute. Um, yes. Again, thank you so much for everybody on this panel. Thank you for the opportunity to be in a virtual room of this magnitude. I, my last closing sentiments, I hope that we could all, may our dreams not be bigger than ourselves. Um, may we create houses that can hold however big our dreams are. Um, may, our, may our Hollywood be a child that is raised by our African village. Wow. Amanda. Amanda, Amanda to that, bro. Amanda to that. Amanda to that. Um, I'm something? so happy. I'm so happy that people are gonna get a chance to see this because, man, um, Ronnie, sir, I've been yes. I've been seeing yes. you there, but I didn't. I don't have it in my notes to call you don't in. It's okay. I just, to add, I just wanted to add. I just wanted to add as the words of Denzel Washington: "Each one, teach one, lift that one else up. If we can Amen. do this. We've got this." We've got this. We've got this. Because it's like on my, on my show, what I'm going to be doing, I will be exposing you. It's you know, you're no longer here. You're here. Let's do this. Connection. Yeah, we've got takeoff. Thank, hey, you, thank you so much. Tap, this is Donald. Donald, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say one thing. I'm one of the producers of the show, one of my business partner. She might not make it back in time to speak. So I just want to, like I said, thank everybody for coming on board. It's been truly amazing. And we have to continue watering this. We have to continue watering and allow it to grow. So we got to yep. make sure we share with people because it's, it's very organic. It's spiritually connecting. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's that time. So just want to thank everybody for their time. One blood, one thank, love. You. Thank, thank you, thank you, Donald. Thank you. Sorry, I, I completely forgot to introduce you, Donald. But um, yeah, you know, um, we appreciate everything you guys have done to to make sure that we can, as a team, come together and make this a reality. Jakari, the whole team, everybody, really, really, really big up. Monde, salute you, sir. Thank you for the strides you 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 making for us um, artists to have a platform to express ourselves because that's what it is you know we're in an industry of expression um and 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 that's what it's about samad who 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 else has to close before or has to say before something before Samad? i see my brother enina is still there but he's okay he's yeah, just he, left yeah, I was yeah, gonna, he can close out at his thing before he goes he can close out well he's not well i, I think he's just he left his seat so you can, is he back? Okay, he's not back. So Samad, I think, um, you know, oh, Michael's still here? Yes, God is good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Michael, you've said everything, so I'm not, I'm not gonna come back to you, but I see you there. I just wanna say thank you so much, sir. We've gotten to know you through the power of connection and communication and, 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 and execution. So, you know, big up for coming onto this platform. Your work is light for us, so keep shining. 
Yes, uh, we appreciate you, Mike, so much. Thank you so much. And you Thank know, you, you know, we'll, we'll be talking soon. So you yeah, know, yeah, yes. If everyone had friends like you, man, we'd be, would be would be in a much better place. Time. Yeah, man. And you, and you know, my brother, you back, you back. I need a word from Nigeria before I send it over to America. What you got? You on mute? You on mute? <laughs> you on mute, my brother? Mute. You're on mute. Yeah, you're, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, we got you. Last yeah. words, my champ. What do you have? Do you have? Do you have last words for us, bro? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I agree with everything everyone said. I'm really uh, grateful to be here today. Uh, I feel really blessed. Like I said, uh, there's a reason why we are all here together today. Oh, Nigeria has happened. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think, uh, like. Uh, uh, some of the speakers said it's about execution. It's execution time. Uh, and I think everything starts from one very pivotal place, which is the story. So if we can pull up the influences that we need to tell the right stories and control the narrative, we can plug in every detail and every character from everywhere in the world in a way that makes sense commercially and in every other way that we want to communicate uh, at our artistry. So I think uh, this, it starts from the story. So we can focus on that. We'll get it right. God bless you, man. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Hopefully we get to meet you soon. Samad. Yes. Chat. Yes. I just want to say this has been amazing. I know we originally thought, hey, we're going to do this in two hours. It's just too many beautiful minds and spirits sharing. And the time took the time that it took, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I know Winsome does as well, so I want to also thank you guys on her behalf once again. Um, Monday, thank you for just jumping on board. We really appreciate you and all the hard work the BE team, BET Africa team has done. Mick Clay, Tabo, Terry, yourself. The whole team, we really appreciate it. And I think you, you know, you, you are definitely a visionary. I've, I've sat down with you many times. So I just appreciate that. You're the first person that came to my mind. Um, Mike, you already know. Thank you so much, brother. Friends like you, hey, we all win. We continue to win. So Atandwa, yeah. thank you, brother. Thank you, Atandwa. We appreciate you so much, man. You know, I had the pleasure of working with you, directing this guy on Love by Chance. He's a character. That, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, um, so, yeah, I just want to say we want to keep this going. I think the, the only we can lose. And what I mean by that is if, if we get out of our own way, we can continue to win. So the things that I meant about tribalism is a real thing. Let's throw that away. We can appreciate each other's background, but we don't have time for that. We only got one life to live. Time is, you look at what we're going through right now with COVID. Tomorrow's not promised. So let's get to work. Let's collaborate. Let's execute. And that's what it's all about. And let's do fair business. Okay? Let's do fair business and execute. I'd also like to thank the people behind the scenes. Michelle, thank you so much for all your hard work. We stressed you out so much. <laughs> Michelle, wave. Let everybody know. I know you've been stressed out back there. Um, 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 Jakari, thank you so much. Our AD, thank you so much. Donald, thank you so much. We're in the trenches together with this. Jermina, thank you so much. Our PR. Um, Tupelo, I can't thank you enough, brother. You've done an amazing job. Steven. Amazing job. Pleasure to work with. Um, Don't forget Steven. Oh, Steven, thank you so much. Steven Powell behind the scenes, running this stuff, running the Zoom. Yeah. Um, and the winners. And the winners, thank you, BT winners, for engaging the BT for coming up with some very compelling questions and taking time out. You know, that's very important. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's true. I mean, it's teamwork makes the dream work. You can't run a production if you don't even have the extras in the background. Let's just say everybody's in. Yeah. Let, sure. let craft services be late. Everybody's in. Okay. So we're sure. just thinking, let's keep continue to build on this. Let's 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 find those partnerships, strategic partnerships. I'd like to thank the Fergusons as well, Connie and Shona. I can go down the list, Anika, 
uh, Malcolm B. Lee. Um, I mean, who the list goes on. It goes on and on it and goes on, on and on and on and on and on and on. And on, and on. Jocelyn, Anika, Anika, Jocelyn, Anika. thank you so much, Anika. I said Anika. So I just want to thank everybody. This was amazing. You know, let's 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 monetize this in in, in terms of new projects, new opportunities, and let's 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 have that ability to. Uh, confide or, uh, or, or look for mentorship from one another, if need be. If you yeah. need advice, I'm always, I'm an open book. I, you know, I can give advice at any time, you know, if, if, if I have something to share. So let's, let's do that. Thank you so Go. much. Thanks a lot, Samad. Thanks Thank a lot, lot. Thank you so much. And, and I'd like to Thank say one last thing. Black Panther played a big part in, you know, it was like I told you earlier, what are you doing in Africa? And then I would share these different stories on Facebook, Instagram over, year, over the years, right? And bring many people to Africa. Then it became, yeah. okay, it's not a bad thing. Then Black Panther hits. And now everybody's like, hey, and that's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful yeah. thing because now we see it, it, brought it brought everything into reality for us. You know, when we come together, when you look at that cast of Black Panther, it was people from South Africa, different parts of Africa, the Caribbean, the U.S., the diaspora and that's yeah. the power that we have and let's let's look at that whether it's a smaller project or something in between let's just keep that mindset going so absolutely. i'm here and I'm, I'm i'm available as mike said absolutely absolutely thank right. you so much Mark. thank you so much and um yeah like you raised your hand now and i think if somebody can take a picture if we can just all raise our hands like this and somebody take a picture screenshot this can we screenshot this? I don't know how to do it on my hey, laptop. Hey, can somebody screenshot this? Somebody behind the scenes? Phone. One of our no, people no, behind no, the no, scenes? No, 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 no. Hold on. Sam, you got to put your hand up. What is it? No. Apple oh, shift you know, we need your hand up. We need your hand up. I'm available. Somebody behind the scenes on our tech team. Simo, you can, you can screen. Bro. It's recording, so you can. Yeah, of course. Freeze frame it. We can freeze frame it. There you go. Freeze frame it. There we go. Michael, count of three. On the count of three. One, two, three. Three. Blueprint. Yeah, we got that. We got that. Yes. Yes. Another one. Another one. I just want to close off by saying, are you? Are we doing another one? One. Two. Three. Look, look, fist this time, man. <laughs> fist. Fist. A fist? There we go. We got okay, it. Yeah. With a fist? Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Ayina, somebody else want to take it. Get the fist up, Ayina. One, two, three. Done. Done. You got that. In closing, my beautiful people, in closing, in closing. Before you close, before you close, Winsome is back. Let Winsome get a last oh, word in. Winsome, Perfect timing. Y'all been closing okay. for about 20 minutes. Yeah. I know, right? The whole show, the whole show is, is, is called closing. Closing with <laughs> And in closing. <laughs> Short and sweet. I want to thank everybody, including my crew. You guys were amazing. This is the beginning of the conversation. It doesn't end here. We'll be doing others. Had to run off. Mommy duty's called, but I'm back. I really wanted to say goodbye in person. So thank you guys for being patient and staying here. And I'm going to say this because I mean, I will see you soon. I will see you soon. Thank you, Samad, for everything. Thank you, Rich and Donna. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. And just, and, and, and I want to leave you with this, everybody. I want to leave you with this. We all, <laughs> another closing. We all have the power of potential in us. You know, Jakari, stay with me. So I call it the P. We all have the P in us. So find your P, find your major power of potential, and let's dig in. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. One love. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. And love. Salute. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Shout out to Team Blueprint. Dream. Hey, Blueprint. One love, Team Blueprint. Yeah.